Hi, everybody. Hello, boys and girls. Boys and girls? Both. Men and women? All of them. Womenists? All the peoples. Menists? All the peoples. Mennonites? And uh, womenonites? Are they still around? <laughs> I, I think they are in Ohio somewhere. Oh, they migrated. Well, you know, they changed to Melanites from Mennonites. And they got female knights. Like, are they in Columbus? Sure. Toledo? But not Christopher. Cleveland? <laughs> we got to stop that, man. Cleveland Rocks? Tip talk? Is that what you said? Tip talk? With a I, P? Tip. Like, just the tip, ma'am? Just the tip top. Just the tip? Yes. I like just the, well, I don't know if anyone else likes just the tip, but I like just the tip. <laughs> All what right, well, are we doing? this started off as Is a not conscious. conscious? <laughs> Jinx, you owe me uh, a Route 44 so, diet, Cherry 7-Up. We are so GD on the same page, my friend. GD. GD. Because, well, we're talking about religion today. God's damn. So, God's damn. You know, that is the best thing that came out of Battlestar Galactica. I was concur. The, was the God's damn it and the God's damn, because they still had that faith in multiple gods all the gods it was a beautiful thing and like the colonies and all that shit yeah and then cylons and then like bangable worthy cylons yeah yeah there was like at least one or two or like a, a number six of them. she was that was her number <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> she was the six they you know number the asian one wasn't unattractive katie park or kathy park she was pretty yeah yeah the guy some of the guys were handsome but just do I have to be here for this? Just the tip talk. Just the <laughs> that's a, that's called a callback, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, Whoa, so okay, <sighs> okay. We're Bring out it. of beer googles. We are, we have we've stopped drinking. Bring it back. We have Bring waited the twelve hour bottle to throttle microphone. Yes, <laughs> the, bottle to microphone. <laughs> bottle to microphone. We are going to get serious now, ladies and gentlemen. God's and help us, Chris. This is one that was. This is one that you want to bring to us. Yes, sir. So talk. Tell me about it. Man. Uh, the title of today's podcast is "Separation of Church and State Slash Religious Freedom," and this came to my attention of a documentary I watched on on the Amazon Prime, uh, talking about a a religious group and how they go about showing their religious freedom to other groups and how it appears that their religious freedom seems to be a challenge. So I thought, okay, well, how did America become a Christian nation? Cause that's the way it seems to be portrayed in the documentary, which we'll get to that a little later, but it, it, that's the way it seems that our country is portrayed is that we are a Christian nation, a Judeo Christian, a Judeo Christian nation. That's correct. Well, specifically and, because of the, I mean, I, I include Judeo in that as, as it's a singular God. Yes, sir. That's where the Correct. original monotheism came through Judaism. So well, Judeo-Christian yeah. well, as a whole well, versus just Christian. Because they, they both believe well, in Jewish a God. Jewish is one God. And a God. Muslim right, that's what is saying. one God. Right, but Muslim, but I'm saying it, it was definitely the Judeo-Christian that came over. Sure. With that. Yeah. Because well, I mean, they're from the Bible. It, it's from the Bible. Correct. 80% of Old Americans Testament identify Jewish. themselves as Christian. I yeah. mean, obviously, 80% doesn't. Doesn't go to church every Sunday. No, you know, but they, if you ask them. Correct. What, if you ask them, oh, whatever. I'm Christian, whether it's Catholic or, you know, Baptist or Lutheran or Mormon or whatever, they do identify themselves as Christian. Yeah. And that's fine. And you're obviously everyone is entitled to their religious beliefs. And that's great. More, you know, more power to you. You can. Well, that's the whole point. That's the that's point. The of whole America fucking point is, is that like, you do, are you allowed. Do you. Yes, and that's that's the whole point of America yeah. is that you can believe what you want, you can say what you want, you can practice whatever you want. That's the whole point of freedom, and that's what the whole country is based upon and founded upon. Yeah, the pursuit of happiness. Yes, as long as your pursuit does not infringe upon the rights of another person's pursuit. That's a very simple way to say it. Absolutely. Like. I mean, we can go into, uh, you know, what's, you know, sexual orientation. Someone liking the same sex does not interfere with my pursuit of happiness. So why would I have an issue with that? For example, that's one that I always point to. That's, yes. That's part of the freedom is a religious freedom is the my pursuit of my personal individual happiness. As long as my personal pursuit does not infringe upon another's pursuit of their happiness. I agree completely. However, that does 
upset a lot of people. It does if because we're biased. If you don't, if if I let's say I'm a Christian and you're a Muslim, a, a lot of Muslims get upset that you're Christian, and a lot of Christians get upset that you're Muslim. Yes, but yet in the v- the very documents of the founding fathers of this country, two hundred and twenty plus years ago, which we will read momentarily, you're you're given the right to do whatever you want with your religious beliefs. And if that belief means believe nothing, that's okay too. Right. So face <sighs> facing East on a blanket in mourning to pray does not harm or get in the way of anyone else doing whatever the heck they want to do. Amen. Right. As, as kind of I, what we're talking about. I could about. not agree more. So, so how, you have a, you have a very good outline of how we're going to, go this way. And I'm very interested in this. And I'm hoping a lot of people get to hear this too, because once again, nothing is wrong. We are our point. We may not agree with certain ideas or religious groups and whatnot. However, people are still allowed to feel that way about it. We don't interfere with that. So we are very free or very open about everyone doing that. We just want to expose this for what it is, because I think to your point, people don't, people misinterpret it a little bit. And it gets personal, and then you know, my God's right. Well, no, it's basically saying, who whatever you think personally is is right for you. Well, t- that's a very interesting statement you just said. My God is right, and that was not on my agenda at all. And I didn't. That's a very interesting statement. How let's? How do you know your God is right? Did your God talk to you? It's faith, man. No, I no. Your well, hang on. Your God didn't talk to you you just believe that you because of a book whether it's the bible or the quran or whatever Anything, yeah. you know the book of the whatever you know what it, you just believe that that your god's right yeah it's faith it's completely faith yeah it's blind it's blind faith but that's what and that's okay that's what faith i mean that's really what see that's the thing is i don't like calling faith and religion the same thing i don't like saying that's what a religion is is faith i think faith in a higher power, in a God figure, or what I like to call the place from which everything came. I think that faith in that is a phenomenal belief, like a phenomenal thing. Yes, Faith is great, but it does get bastardized by humans. Of course. And that's where where I get stuck a little bit. But that's where, this is very interesting, we have human intervention stating a separation of church and state. And I'm really interested in how we're going to go with it. Are we going to read the first amendment first of all? Yes. So we're going to read just the portion about the just faith read the part. first amendment, bro. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Keep going. Or abridge the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. So that's what that means. So you basically, you can believe whatever you want. There should be no law res- respecting the establishment of religion. Right. What that means is it's not saying that we are Catholic. We are a Catholic nation. Right? You, you notice they say Judeo-Christian. They never actually say. Where does it say they're Judeo-Christian? No, 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 no. When people speak of the United States. They call themselves a Judeo-Christian nation. That's not written down no, anywhere. No, it is not. I'm talking about how we verbally describe the United States. We're talking about certain types of people, right? Yes, A sir. specific set, group of people call us a Judeo-Christian nation. I call. I believe we're based on Judeo-Christian ethics and Judeo-Christian uh, values. values, but not on the God belief. But we're going to get a little more into that. But to this extent, it's not only saying that you can believe, like the free exercise, that means that you can believe what you want, but it's not going to pick a side. It's basically saying the government will not take a side. So it's not going to say they're Catholic or Mennonite or Amish. That's what that that means, yeah, to me. And it's interesting um, that as I was doing the research on on this, the, the First Amendment and the timeline of events throughout American history regarding um, God and country. Basically that, that 
phrase came to mind, God and country. And people yeah. say that all the time. And I've seen that sticker on the back of vehicles and trucks and for, for God and country. A lot of F-150s. <laughs> and that's not an airplane. That That is a Ford. A so um, a, a lot of, and that's very common phrase. And I, I don't know if that's just because of the city and state that we live in. I, I, I assume that's very common throughout the country. I don't know that for sure. I don't want to speak for people in other parts of the country. I assume, and that could be bad, I'm assuming that is a common phrase, God and country. It is, uh, and I, I think I can actually explain it without digging into it, which we might have to do some Dig research. Dig into it, um, bro. People who are into country are patriotic. Patriotic people, on the in a very general sense, are more conservative. They're not as progressive, right? They're a little more family, you know, faith, family, blah, blah. So God and country just gets pulled together, right? Like uh, America and guns, you know, like <laughs> it's, it's God and country. It, it's a thing. It's, it's, if, if you believe in the one, you kind of have to believe in the other. Not and that's, necessarily. You don't. What I'm saying is they're saying it in that way. I mean, my father was very, my family, well, my mother, my mother and father, very, very religious, very, very, very devout Christians. Yeah. I mean, the number of Christian crucifix, that's redundant, Christian crucifixes. I, well, they've I, got different crucifixes. I mean, I'm I apologize sure. for the idiot's comment. You should see our now. bathroom. Oh, don't, don't go, don't go pee there. Or oh, is it? I need to leave. I have to go. I have to go. Now. The, the Jesus watches you pee down there, bro. It's ter terrifying. Dude, you should see. He watches me do other stuff. <laughs> I'm not ashamed, Jesus. Oh, dear Lord. So, uh, <laughs> literally, my dad, I mean, God rest his soul, incredibly religious, incredibly devout, prayed every single day for myself and my sister, and blah, 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 blah. And prayed for the, the salvation of his soul, as he told me. And, but yet he did not have a gun, you know, yeah, he, he, he served and he was in the army twice, two different wars, but he didn't have a weapon. He did not believe, you know, that was his, and that's his right. Well, too. His personal right. It's yeah. his right to but not have a gun the country. So yes. he was God and country. Well, it's true, but he did <laughs> not, he did not, that wasn't his way. So right. that uh, he may have been the exception to the rule, but he did not go down the same road that you're describing. Yeah. My grandfather fought for on the German side for World War in World War II. <laughs> okay. And when he came over, I I am I am a second right second amendment guy. I just am. Okay. So I remember something of being on TV talking about, you know, guns, right? I look at my grandfather I'm like, "You believe in the right to you know, right to bear arms, right, Opa? And he's like, no. And I was like shocked by that answer. And he and I go, why? And I didn't understand the perspective till later, but it was like, why don't you believe in in the right to bear arms? And he goes, they made me carry one. Wow. And it's like, it's kind of like, I can't eat Pizza Hut because I work there now. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm thinking that's kind of how that was. It's like he was forced to carry one. The fact that and you made him a pass Pizza Hut a as a gun analogy is <laughs> amazingly deep, sir. Sir, that's how we roll. <laughs> Food, mm, pizza, and guns. <laughs> what more? And God and country, apparently. God and country and Pizza Hut. <laughs> so um, deep dish with, with God and country. And you're right. It's just one of those patriotic statements, in my opinion. I think that explains it a lot of ways. Um, it's just people who are very, you know people are perceived as not patriotic just because they're progressive. And that's not necessarily true. Not at all. In some ways it is. Some people are being un-American, <laughs> but in general, I think we just have a lighter viewpoint than, than, than a conservative viewpoint, but still believe in the tenets of America, like what America is based on. I would hope most of us feel that way. Well, I try to be open-minded to everyone. Yeah. And, and I try to, I that's try what the to bill of rights ask, really right. Yeah. And it I basically try to, tells us that I, I, I want to be, you know, obviously no one's perfect and I'm first in line in that. I try to have a, I would like to be able to have a civil discourse with anyone from any point of view, any religion, any viewpoint. Yeah. However, that being said, semicolon, that's a challenge sometimes. It's yeah. and I I, I I find it difficult to have a conversation with someone 
because of the fact that they are so close minded. And sometimes I am too. So, and especially if, if I'm not even able to get my opinion or my belief out of my mouth because I'm interrupted in the middle of a sentence, dude, come on, man. Like I let you speak. Oh man. Can you give me nine? Just give me 90 seconds. That's it. Can you shut up for 90 seconds? Oh no, you can't. Do you remember episode two? That was all I did to you, man. Real quick, real quick, real quick. (laughs) Um, I did. I am guilty of that. Uh, you've. And I wasn't referring to you. I at know all. you weren't at I all. I wasn't. And you were being very kind. I'll tell you later who I was referring to. To whom you were referring to? whom I was referring. Um, God damn. God's damn it. But as we've gotten further, I mean, someone made Dude, a you're joke. You're a rock star, bro. A young woman named Elisa made a joke. Elisa. Elisa's like, hey, we need to get a real quick t shirt. <laughs> Hashtag real quick t shirt. <laughs> and you know what? Elisa, you were correct. Were correct. We have yeah, improved. Yeah, we things have, have changed well, a we, lot. We really have, and I and agree. I've always respected your opinion, but yes, I'm so anxious to get mine out, and that is such a in unfriendly and just in. It's just not the best way to do it, and I'm I was I'm wrong in doing that. So I really try to sit on my hands a lot more than I used to. S- to your point, not perfect. Yeah, better, but not perfect. So to that to that end. Yeah, you just want to have a discourse with anyone about anything. We're here to talk about any topic. Right. I mean, we've talked about movie scenes and religion and Michael Jackson. And they're about as diverse. We're pretty right. much diverse. And Spotlight. Yeah, Spotlight. I mean, that's a big one, too. And that's where we're at. So we've read the First Amendment. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Meaning we're not going to take a side. We're not going to respect a specific one. We're not going to take one as ours, and we're not going to prohibit you from having any of your thoughts or ideas about it. Now, what's interesting about this, uh, do you want to go through that chrono- chrono- chronology? Chron- chronological order of chronological events? Order Whatever of it takes. Sure, yeah. I would love to. Three, 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 uh, I find it interesting that... And that, you know... It, the phrase God and country or the phrase in God we trust or that, that, that expression, that statement under God. Sh- yes, absolutely. Under, under God, God that it, if it's, it doesn't say which God it doesn't say, I mean, if, if, if America was 80% Jewish or 80% Muslim or 80%, whatever, uh, Darth Vader, let's say we all worship Darth Vader, whatever. I don't care. Pick a God, right? You know, Zeus, who cares? But, we all Americans all know which God we're talking about. We we know it's Jesus. We assume that. No, come on. Hold on. Well, the reason we assume that is because in the 1600s, everyone believed in God. There was a God that existed. Like there, to not have a faith in just the general term God. Then we got down into specifics, right? God was always this. Even Newton had that God overlying thing. Yes, yes. So, in my opinion, I I could be wrong, but in that era, God was a very general term for just that higher power. They called it God. That was all they could call it. They never specifically. They weren't. They didn't specify which one. You're right. Well, even today, it doesn't. They still don't. It doesn't say. But then somebody hijacks that term. And they use their God as the God. Right. Because technically, the Western world is Christianity. Well, right. And the Eastern world is Buddha, Muslim. Right. Islam. You know, but it's on, a on the American dollar bill, it says in God we trust. Yes, and we're going to get to that. We will. But, and I may, I'm perhaps jumping ahead a little, and that uh, that's fine. But it's okay. We're going to jump around because jump that's around. how. Jump, jump around. around. Get out jump of your up, seat. Jump up and get, and get down. down. The point is, it doesn't say. Which God? Correct. But we all know. I think we hijacked it. I think we... we Who's told, we? Americans? Yes, Americans that had... Because it was majority Christ, uh, Christ-based, Christian. Christianity, right? Because Catholic is a sect of Christianity of course as a whole, is. right? Yes. They're all, they all believe in Christ in yes, some way. Sir. So they just... They, they took over the airways. Look at the Billy Graham thing. I mean, we're going to get into the In God We Trust, Under God on the Pledge... We're going to yeah, get into yeah, yeah, yeah. these these things, these cultural things that they inserted into our brains. We've been, I, in my opinion, been brainwashed to say that it is that God, but but it's not. It's not. It's it was. A, they understood. They being okay. the founding fathers. Okay, got it. 
But no, I don't no, want to. No, I don't want to no, continue too far down off. your. I want to hear the rest of your thought process. Well, well this is the thing. They understood. They, that, the founding fathers. Yes. So when the Mayflower came over, okay. they were religiously persecuted, right? Isn't that the initial? See, that's what I thought too. That's my understanding of it. Okay. But they were being persecuted, so they just want to get away. They didn't even start. It wasn't to start a new country. It was it to and escape? And that was sixteen twenty, right? Yeah, it was, it was okay. that to escape religious to escape per- persecution, persecution in from England. I believe it was England. Yes. Okay, and the, and it was pretty nasty. It, the 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 British war. I mean, the IRA and United Kingdom fought for how many years uh, over Protestant and hundreds? Catholic, right? I mean, isn't that what it is? Protestant Catholic, or yes, sir. Orthodox, and I didn't know the IRA was around in the sixteen hundreds. Well, no, no, I'm saying. Look, even nowadays, there's oh, like, yeah, yeah. there's battles over this. Well, religious, that's just kind of so imagine how strong it was back then. Oh like, yeah, was, when there wasn't even open mindedness. Yeah, yeah, you know. Um, so they come over and and they're like, well, we all God's there. Like God, I don't think God was ever questioned whether there was a God. It did get into semantics of who. So they said, well, we all believe in God, so we'll just say God because it, taken aside that that jumps on your individual right to believe what you want to believe. It, they really understood the individual right of a human of the human beyond i mean more more accurately <laughs> than any despite the slavery prior, part despite the slavery part and you can't my, you can't hear me roll my eyes on the <laughs> podcast and it's my opinion they did want that to be part of it initially and it was initially written in but they didn't feel they could get all of it in one shot and i'm look i could be 100% incorrect about 97% that 97% correct and i look i Equality is all we want. Yeah. The equality of opportunity is all we want. We want everyone. If you and I are different races or belief systems and we apply for a job, we put our resumes next to each other. They don't look at the name and read into it. They don't look at the picture and read into it. And they just choose the one they feel might be better. Even if it's a coin flip. I've been saying that people should be doing that. Don't look at the name look at and you can't discriminate based upon age race sex but you do well and i don't mean that in a bad i i know it's just the the subconscious of the human has an innate bias it's not what they're nor they're initially naturally culturized but we should i agree that and i've been saying this for a while that we should black out the names we, I said that when you said that there was a scandal at like MIT because they were not letting Asians it was in. Harvard. Harvard. Thank you. I knew yes. it was Massachusetts. Yeah. No, but, no. Perfect. So the same thing. Black out the names. But the same thing with job interviews. Right. Like whoever is the most qualified should get the interview. Right. And then how you, you know, how do you do in the interview process? That sort of thing. Do you want to, uh, we may edit this part out, but you know, what's really going to burn me right now. Um, the tacos you had last night. NASA. NASA. What the fuck is wrong with me? NASA? NASA. Did you spike Jesus your Route 44? Fuck. It's been a long night, ladies and gentlemen. And it's in the morning still, so it's weird. It's so NASA, noonish, bro. NASA, their slogan is the next man and the first woman on the moon. It's not to live long and prosper. <laughs> I think that's later. I think that's, t- that's our next episode. Because I was thinking about maybe... Living long and prosper. Oh, that's good, bro. It was one of mine, but or nice. the other guy. Okay, yeah, we're thinking about that. We'll talk about that. But um, it's the next. It's the next man and first woman on the moon. And my personal opinion of that is that that's rubbish. That is trash. That is a trash uh, slogan. Is that why not? Why can't we just say the next two most qualified people, humans, on the moon? Does it does it really fucking matter if it's two women and no men. No, That'd it be, does yeah. not fucking matter to me. Yeah. If you have the two most qualified people who can get the tasks that are needed done, there doesn't need to be like, it's almost like we talk about being diverse or not They're for it's what do you call it? It's that shit from the seventies. Affirmative action. Affirmative action. It's like we're talking about not doing that, but we're specifically acknowledging we are that we doing are it. by stating that it's Correct. the next man and first it's woman. Exactly what they're doing. We're doing exactly what we're trying to avoid, and I think that's dangerous. I just think it's dangerous. I agree that what men and if- women are equal in the certain tasks. Men can lift heavier fucking things. Okay, women think in different ways that are are, are more progressive in some cases. We all have strengths. And we all have challenges, and we complement each other. But anyway. What happens if 
This is the weirdest tangent, by the way. We're no, it's not. We've had way weirder tangents. <laughs> Tangents.net. So what happens but it's consciousness, if, right? What At happens if the about next things. man and the first woman on the moon, so they they force a, they they per, purposefully select a woman and purposefully select a man. Yes. And what happens if the most qualified two candidates were two women? Right. And they force a man to go. Correct. That's fucking stupid. Right. Or the second most qualified is a man, but it's a woman mission. Like it's a woman centric mission, right? Same thing. Same exact opposite. Same exact opposite. The reason I say is totally just, the same. I just talk about the men's physique in general. Yeah. It's bigger. So like, right. I would think that there are some tasks that require physical. a little more physical exertion. I could be wrong. And, and look, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean a woman can't do it. I'm not saying that at, all. I understand. As a matter of fact, I'm saying that the two most qualified could be women, to your point. Absolutely. And they send a man and a woman. You know? Or, the look, the two most qualified, oh my God, God forbid, could be men. And they take, they send one woman along be, for the politi- political aspect of it. I get it. it. No, and it, it's, I am not stating, to be clear, I'm not stating that anyone is more or less qualified by their gender or sex or anything. That's all I'm saying. But it's a weird, it's a weird statement to me. The next man and the first woman, like we want the, the first woman president. You know what I want? The fucking person who I feel can get the job done the best. It can be a woman. I'm just going to let you know. There's a woman out there I know could do the job. It could be a gay Asian. I and, don't care. And look, I want women to, to have that such a much as much of a shitty ass job as men have had doing it the whole time. It's a fucking shit job. But regardless, I'm I'm all for it. Give me give me a woman that I feel is 100% qualified to do the job. And I've got people on my brain that are that that are women. I'd be like, "Yeah, let's do it." Anyway, you talked me into it. Um Ricky Schroeder's thumb, what are your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> uh, check mark would you like to explain we're going to talk about that one we're, no, we're going to talk about beer googles I think. we're not going to yeah well we're going to flirt it we're teasing it on this episode so you're going to flirt it and we're yeah we're going to tease it for the next beer google so I you like have to that. listen into what ricky schroeder's thumbs I all like about that. uh but every when when we're going to have a pause rick schroeder's thumbs probably got something to say about it hey boo I just wiggled my thumb. At him. You wiggled my thumb. Wiggled your <laughs> wiggle my thumb. Wait, don't wiggle no, my I thumb. I, I wiggled your no th- touching. Wiggle your own thumb. No yeah, touching. No touching. No touching. What does he say? Hey, T Bone. T Bone. <laughs> I think he's like T Bone with his ice cream sandwich. It's melting. You uh, want an ice cream sandwich? Oh God. Back on track, my dude. I've got the worst fucking attorneys. The worst what? Do you remember when he's like? Um, a husband, a wife can't get can't get charged for the same crime as a husband. I don't think that's right, Dad. Oh, I've got the worst fucking attorneys. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey Tambor in Arrested Development. Yes. What a great fucking show that was. Back on track. May we reel it in? Here we go. Question number one for Checkmark. When was the first documented account of the term separation of church and state? I would say it's after it was written because it doesn't actually write. Re- it's not written separation of church and state. Okay. So it's after um, 1790. Eight. Who wrote it? Jefferson. Yes. Did he? Yes. No sh- yes. Go check mark. Bro. 1802. Well, I mean, he wrote so much. Way to go check mark. 1802. 1802. Okay. Wow. By Thir- the TJ. 35 years after. 1802. No, 25 years after. Yeah. It was uh, after the declaration. Uh, 1802 by wow. Thomas Jefferson. Years after. It was to a it, in a letter to a group of um a, a organized group of Baptists. Interesting. How does how was that written? Do you have like the phrase of what I it was do. written? I do. Stand by please. Oh my gosh, that would be awesome. Oh my goodness. Ricky Ricky throw, Ricky Shorter's thumb. What do you have to say about this? Thank Excellent you. point. Yes. Appreciate your input. Thank you. Thank you. That's gonna, is that one's going to be a weird one. We've got checkmark <laughs> Deutschmark. Watermark and Ricky Schroeder's thumb. <laughs> Has anyone seen Andromeda Strain? No. Okay. Did you ready? we end up watching the end of it, or do we? Yes, just... that's when he threw the thumb up. Well, the... It was right near the thing. Right God, it was end. horrible. Was don't awful. don't ever watch that shitty movie. It wasn't in okay, the book. Okay, here you I'm go. Sure. Thomas Jefferson's letter, eighteen o two, to the Danbury Baptist Association, referencing the First Amendment to the Constitution. 
believing with you that religion is a matter which lies solely between man and his God, that he owes account to none other for his faith or his worship, that the legitimate powers of government reach actions only and not option, I'm sorry, not opinions, I contemplate with sovereign reverence that act of the whole American people which declared that their legislature should make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, thus building a wall of separation between church and state. That, and if I may, please, was Thomas Jefferson also at least a co-author of the Bill of Rights, if not the author? I believe he was, right? Uh. I'm pretty certain. So you've got the person who wrote the initial thought and then he explains it. Why the fuck isn't that in there? The first pieces of that, the first phrase of that is so vital to what he was trying to say. To their God. They all had faith in a God and they said to their God. He never said to the Christian God and he never said to the Jewish God. So we are not based on Judeo Christianity, uh, we are based on the values that Judeo Christians may have had, or people of that faith built this country upon, upon which they built this country. Yes. Again, it's still referencing a God. Yes, because the faith that there was no question whether there was a God in the 17, 1800s is my point. Correct. So, him, but he specifically said, your personal God. Yeah. Not my God. Correct. Right? Or the but, God. Between or, a man and God. Right. He didn't call it the God. Right. A man and God. His personal faith with God. Your Their God, specifically. Yes. And that's the important part. So why do people not understand how simply that's written? And it's wrong? I don't understand how they can... Make that a point of contention because it's clearly written. The same people who fight so hardly for the Second Amendment are telling us that Christ is the God, in in my opinion, right? Like, yeah, oh, yeah. there's a correlation between Christians and gun owners. I'm there is, I'm sure there is some kind of, or at least that sect, right? Judeo Christian belief system and gun ownership. So how can you take the Second Amendment, fight so hard for it, and then shit on the first part of the First Amendment? I I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> I wish did I, I just did. Get bitter? I did, or did I say it at least in a decent way? Yeah. I, I'm not trying to sound bitter. I'm trying to be honest. It's like, a valid question. Right. And I don't understand that at all. Right, because we talk, the people who are running around not wearing masks and carrying their Let's guns. Let's not go down the mask road, bro. No, I'm just, it's a freedom thing. Right. I'm just talking in a personal freedom. The people not wearing their masks and carrying their guns are also the people saying that you can't believe what you want to believe unless you believe in their God. Right. We get we will get into what exactly we're talking about later. And I think you're talking about the Hulu documentary. This one. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, Hulu. It's OK. Hulu. I'm sorry. It's not okay. Amazon. Not, not the, Amazon. Just because we're going to talk about it. Right. Yes. So 1802 is the first time. Something written in a letter about the separation, a bu building a wall between separation and of church and state. Yes, separating sir. church and state. Yeah, that was the first time that phrase was documented. That's early enough. Used. That's early enough, and by a founding father to say, and probably a, a, a least co-author well, of the Bill of Rights. Was he the second president? Yeah, third. I don't, who cares? Top three. Adam, wasn't it Washington Adams, Jefferson, sure. Quincy Adams, right? I don't know. Please. Uh, Twitter world. Do I'll not look it me. up if you want. No, we don't need to do that. And we're smart enough to look that up as we're, as they're listening. Sure. <laughs> but once again, we're going back to this. Uh, there's a separation of church and state. So I think that's old enough though, to adopt separation of church and state is one of the original documents. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Okay, cool. So we should have separation of church and state. Now, one thing about that, that bothers me, that troubles me is tax exemption for churches because they're supposed to be separate from we're supposed to keep church and state separate are they then not have any interference by any means so they shouldn't pay taxes or should they be treated just like everyone else by saying that they're not special and be taxed 
What are your thoughts on that? It was not on my list at all. Oh, damn it. Oh. Which, that's a great question. So I'm we'll glad that out, you brought it up. We'll touch that up on that on the end then. No, Let's you can go. talk about it now. I don't oh. care. So what are your thoughts on that? Because, like, do we not tax them and completely? But remember, there's lobbies. There's lobbyists out there that are Christian lobbyists, right? Paying off senators and paying off congressmen to get their buildings built and whatever, right? Do we not tax them or do we tax them? Thank you, Ricky Schroeder's thumb. That was an we absolutely point. tax them. Okay, I, I don't. I don't. I mean, f- first of all, the Catholic Church has so much money; it's disgusting. Second of all, right, but uh, that's because of the lemmings who okay fed into the it doesn't Catholic matter Church. why they have money; they have money. Second of all, right, if you if if you look, uh, but that's like getting mad at a business for making money. Yeah, but th- but I know. I know that. He, However, their their I don't even know how to say it. Purpose is not to be a business. No. Oh. Okay. They Jesus was poor. Yeah. Jesus was he we don't even know if he had shoes. We're pretty sure he didn't own a horse, right? Yeah. He but walked, yet probably. but yet cardinals and bishops have gold chains and ride on private jets and that's just catholicism so let's move off of that so secondarily many christian sects have money yeah and and there can be money made in faith and religion correct and i've been to i've been to non-denominational christian churches because old girlfriends, hey, let's go to church. And I went, oh, sure. And then that was a debacle. And I can tell That's you awesome story time way. if you want. And um, I have that in a little bit. Okay. God, it was horrible. So, <laughs> and this gentleman that I went, he was wearing 8,000. The dude was wearing eight grand. Yeah. The suit, the shoes, the, the, the rings, the Rolex. Yeah, he was a... He so, was a used I, Jesus salesman. Yeah, he might as well have been selling a 73 Pinto with Our Lady of Guadalupe on the hood, bro. Oh, that would have been beautiful. Like with La Cucaracha as a horn. La Airbrush? La Airbrush on the, the hood? The dingle balls and the fuzzy the, dice in the, the window. On the hood, like the hood oh, yeah. ornament or the airbrush yeah, the, on the, the, the hood? Yeah, the Virgin Mary doing the hula on the dashboard for reals, bro. The side of the van with Jesus on the cross. So the, the, that, that was my point is that yeah. this gentleman was... And the greasy hair. He was he was wearing eight thousand right. dollars. The point is this: Why was he wearing eight thousand dollars when when the people giving him the money that he accumulated the eight thousand dollars are have lint in their pockets? That's yes, but that's not the point. The point is he's wearing it grand, but yet Jesus was poor. So that does those two things don't make sense to me well i think i think you and i can both agree that religion has become a business and that's in its own right is an is stinky but but to try to focus it on just a f- separation of church and state regardless they right. should be taxed because okay. this guy had eight thousand dollars on his body right well you're saying the church brings in money so that money should be taxed to help this this the country yeah or okay. give it directly to the community well, yeah but to the poor right but tax go to the state or the, the government the and then the government city, finds understand. out what they do so this is the question though does the separation say we they have no influence and shouldn't be taxed because they're actually not even part of the state building the wall between state and church church and state right building that wall you're saying that they're not part of the state, so why would they be subject to those taxes? I'm only bringing the question up. I'm not I saying understand. I pick a side. I think that is where it's almost written more saying that they're not part of the state, so they're not they're not beholden to the state with taxes because ta- the state is the only thing that collects taxes. And I don't mean one of the 50 states. You mean I mean the, the United States. You mean, yes. yes. Yeah, so what's your thought on that? I don't really understand the question. Well, they shouldn't be taxed because they're not part of the state. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I'm just asking. Yes. Okay. Go property back to tax, you. they'd pay because it's property. Property's on the state. That makes total sense. Like those types of things. But specific like income tax or of the church. Yes. Entity. So I would allow 
no taxation if there was no lobbyists. Right. If there was no Christian lobbyists and they had no influence over government at right. any level, right. I would allow no taxation. So because you have a cardinal being the head uh, preacher at a police department, for example, like the one that blesses them at dinners. You know what I'm talking about? Like they, yes. there's like, you know, they wasn't that father. Wasn't he like the head of some police stuff and whatnot? The the one with Tyson? Nah. He, he was very influential in the community. Oh, yeah. Oh, and I'm yeah, sure yeah, he yeah. might have been, you know, saying prayers. Well, we did. There's this show called The Keepers on Netflix. Okay. And it's a the, the guy from Bishop Keogh or whatever. They, I started they, watching it, but. The priest was also like the police department's like head bishop or whatever the head, the priest for that. Yeah. So that's part of the state. And yeah. here he is blessing a handful of them. But does that, are they blessing the state or are they blessing individuals who have that personal belief? How separate do we make this? Well, do you have, did, did the, did the, is there exchange of money? Is there? Right. That's a good point. So no, the lobbyist you're talking about is yeah. like, help me get this Christian bill pushed through. Right. That's the thing. If you can eliminate Christian lobbyists. Yeah. Oh, no, you know what? Or, wait, well, I'm wait, sorry. Wait, religious lobbyists. Religious lobbyists. Faith lobbyists. I'm Correct. Sorry, I apologize. Not Christian. Correct. All religious lobbyists. To be clear, 100% all yes. religions. Yes. Not specific because you can't, to any. you Correct. can't discriminate. Right. So if you if you want to not pay taxes, you can have you have to have zero influence over government. You know what? you can't have any you have, you truly have to have a true separation of church and state. You can't have this dick b- bullshit back and forth. I agree. I agree that it, I wasn't even aware there was Christian lobbyists. If we're well, I'm uh, thinking there must be. I mean, you you have churches donating to police departments all the time for equipment. You have churches donating uh, to campaigns. You're telling me that a fucking Christian? That's wrong. I don't disagree with you. I complete to your point. If we don't tax, then they have they should be completely separate. What happens if my mom? Now they are protected by fire and police. Don't get me wrong; as hu- they're still citizens of the United States, and they will, be, they will have those individual rights. But as a church entity or a religious entity, they should have no. They should be completely separate. Yeah, they agree. They're they're a religious organization. Yep. Under the religion dot uh, dash LLC, your comment, and their their whole point is to save people's souls, not to have a political agenda. Right. That's it. Right. That's it. That's all done. Well, we talk about that too. Is uh, you know, where's one of these initial? We might as well push this in right now because we're kind of talking about it. Sure, right? go ahead, sir. But like, it was Matthew twenty two twenty one, and that's from the Bible. From the Bible, render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. And that one seems to be referenced a lot when we talk about this because it almost sounds like Jesus was saying. Once again, assuming there's a Jesus and that happened, that actually was said that let the state, which is Caesar at the time, which is Rome, let Rome do what it's doing and let God handle the things that are God's and God's things. I would think were only your personal 10 commandments, the way you live your life in God, in accordance to God and let the other, let the chips fall where they may when it comes to Rome and politics and everything else. Yes. That's what it feels like to me. But that was specifically a statement aimed at Jewish people of the time, whether they should pay taxes to the Roman government because they weren't, they didn't worship Roman gods. Right. So, Hey, why should I pay taxes to the Roman government when I'm not Roman? I'm Jewish. I don't worship what they worship. And that was Jesus's response. That's interesting. Cause it's funny. I was like, I'm Jewish, not Roman. Well, if you're a citizen of Rome, aren't you Roman? Well, they they didn't want to be a citizen of Rome. They right. were they were that conquered. Right. Well, so yeah. well, then you're yes. forced to pay taxes. Correct. I mean, it's not like it was willful, but you are under the yes. umbrella of Rome at that you, point. And you un, the, un, un, against your will, yes. Yes, you certainly didn't choose this. Right. You're a conquered nation. Correct. I mean, I don't think anybody in France wanted to be a Nazi no, while they were not. being occupied. Right, no shit. I'm going to guess. Most <laughs> most didn't. Uh, no shit. Wee wee poo poo. <laughs> I was like, I just have to sneak in a French comment every once in a while. Uh-huh. Je t'aime. French bread. Oh, no, I love you, man. French that's, fries. That's what that means. Ooh. 
French cut underwear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. French beer is <coughs> so good. Moving along. That was interesting. On our historical <laughs> turn of events, uh, there was a uh, mention before the pilgrims came in the 1600s, both the Spanish and the French made it here first in uh, North Florida, but they called it Caroline anyway. And there were some battles because the Spanish uh, were Catholic and the French were not. Right. So they killed each other. Oh, uh, yeah. That's nice. The Puritans. Um, yeah. Interesting. So I thought that <laughs> sounds just really interesting. And then, um, so this is even before the country's formed, right? Correct. We're not even here. This, this is 150 was, years prior. That was, in 150, the, I mean, 16, 1620. That was been. in the late 1500s. Oh shit. And so then, um, uh, that's here. fucking ridiculous, man. And that's the thing. Like I get back in the day, conquering was what was done. Cause you could, I, I would assume that you didn't really talk things out. But now we can kind of talk things out. We can kind of get. There's like a thing called compromise that we can. You do. you know yeah. Hello. Hey man, let's like I'll believe half of your flying spaghetti monster. I'll believe in the meatball part, and you believe in the uh, the other part of my macaroni monster. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! So um, Ricky thumbs Ricky thumbs Schroeder. Hey Whoa. Ricky thumbs Schroeder. What do you have to say about this? Even though it's Ricky Schroeder's thumb. Nothing, huh? Man, I can't find this article. It's killing me. Dude, shut up, Ricky. Throw it, show your So, uh, so next on the list was in uh, Flushing, New York. Oh, I like Flushing. It's my favorite act. My second favorite so act. So there was an edict issued in Flushing, New York. 1657? 1657. Jesus. And it was it made me laugh. That's why I wanted to read it. He <laughs> said edict. Of it course said, it made you laugh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you I edict. said edict. <laughs> Bevis, you said edict. So poop. I can't find hey, it. Hey Bevis, wanna know it runs with Venus? Uh Vitrap. Oh man, where is it? It's killing <laughs> me. I had it right here, son of a bitch. He has tabs open, ladies and gentlemen, and he's looking and I he's have stalling. many tabs. It's very upsetting. And as we stall, we're gonna dun dun. Dun 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 Really I mean I could just spitball it. Just spitball, my friend. Fuck it. I think we're good. So anyway. That was a girl from Iwo Jima, by the way. It was really fucking good. Okay, so there was an edict in uh I'm gonna laugh every time you say edicts. Fuck. So it basically stated that People were allowed in their little town <laughs> that were Jewish and Egyptian and some other religion, but not Quakers. And if you harbored a Quaker, you were arrested. So it specifically stated you you could be three different religions, but not Quaker. That's really fucking specific. It, that's, and I was like, I know it was really weird. So in 1657, if you, quote unquote, harbored a Quaker, you would be arrested. So and it specifically stated you could be Jewish or Egyptian. So was there an influx of Egyptians in Flushing, New York in 1657? It was very strange. Jews, Egy and didn't the Jews escape Egypt? Like, why are they together? I didn't get, it was very weird, How the dude. fuck are they in cahoots? I I <laughs> <laughs> like, and that's another one, I'm sorry. Edict and cahoots are like it's, I was very words. weird, and I didn't get it. We're going to have to follow up on that, because I now I need to fucking know. Yeah. Because I didn't know anything about this. And you, it was you, really you weird. You dig so much deeper than I do, and I apologize that I, I am an ignorant fuck well, when it I'm comes the, to a lot I'm of the these. Virgo, bro. Yeah, I know. And I'm so, just a free spirit um, Libra. <laughs> <laughs> it was just birthday, interesting hey, that birthday's coming up. Yay us. We're so, going to eat steak and no, and fish, fish bro, and We're, scrimps and scallops. So good. And baked potatoes the size of a baby's arm. Four people celebrating their September birthdays together. Yeah. It's going to be a beautiful thing. Ill regardless, I found it ironic that even Yes. Jews, Egyptians, and, and somebody else. Somebody else. Okay. But so we'll, I, and yeah. they were not allowed. We'll put that article to in the Quakers. When we find the article, we'll put it in the uh, yeah, notes. Yeah, it's notes. here. I have it. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I love it. But I found it ironic that even 350 years ago, you weren't. You still nothing's really changed. Like people still hate each other for for the religion. It's funny. 
It's horrible. Only a hundred years after that, there was a group of people who understood how important it was to not have that. Anymore. Yes. Yes. So it tells you, even in today's world, we still have a challenge accepting other people's faith. Right? Right. We have a challenge with that. To your point, 350 years later, these motherfuckers 250 years ago had an idea about how to fucking solve that. And we still aren't, we, we aren't ad- adhering to it the way I think they intended us to, huh? Kind of. I kinda agree feels. completely. And what happened to us? Oh, so, so Egyptians and Jews, Jews fled Egypt. Isn't that weird, dude? And now they were together in cahoots to shit on a Quaker. <laughs> Is that like a quacker? I was, you stole my line, man. Oh, That's sh- jacked up. <laughs> shit. <laughs> What about the oatmeal though? Mm. Can you have Quaker oatmeal? Yes. What if you was that what if that was the only kind of oatmeal? General Mills Quaker oatmeal. Is that the correct company? I don't even know. Yes. So okay. So, it's the old guy in the box. What are we scrolling through, bro? Uh next on the list would be in um So after sixteen fifty seven. Next was uh in the in the same year in Baltimore. Apparently Baltimore was founded by Lord Baltimore. I mm. wasn't aware of that. In the colony of Maryland there was a battle between the Catholics and the non-Catholics about what you could do. So there was a, a battle within their, they didn't, I don't know what they called it, a parliament or something, a Congress, something like that within the, within the colony about the, is it going to be a Christian or is it going to be Catholic? So they went back and forth on who it was called an assembly. Pardon me. So the assembly said, what can we do? Which kind of religion is going to be? So for about 15 years, they went back and forth about which kind of religion is going to be for that colony. I found that was interesting. I thought it was worth mentioning. Did they end up with an answer? They apparently in uh, Lord Baltimore, the Catholic in 1658, finally got control back. Wow. Stupid. So the colony was Catholic then, technically, yes, at in that 1658. Point, yeah. And then, I mean, I would assume they would stay the same until 1776. Yeah, and then s- some undeclare. guy broke off, and, fo- and and that's why he started Rhode Island, so that he could uh, establish... Have his own Protestant thing No, he or, wanted or, religious freedom. Freedom, okay. And then another, somebody else broke off and started another colony, for also for religious freedom. Right. And I, it's basically another state. Interesting. And I, I didn't write that one down. So I'm wondering... I'm wondering how powerful it was for the ratification of the Bill of Rights by the state of Maryland. Yeah. Like we, I didn't even look into that. That seems like something really That would have been about. interesting to say, hey, hey, we need to have a Did that neutral... fuck up their ratification right. process? That's a very good question. Huh. That's really interesting, though. So colonies, a colony voted on a religious group to that they were going to represent yes. Catholics. And from that, two other colonies broke off to be free to, to, to break re- away to from have that. to specifically state you right. can be religious. Now, they say freedom, but a lot of times it's to pursue their own personal religion. Well, it's specifically stated in the article that it was the Rhode Island and the other state or the other colony at the time could be whatever religion they wanted. That's awesome. So it specifically was there f- to bring in people for whatever religions, right. but I'm curious, and it didn't state that, but I'm sure it's there that did, were there little, ta- like, Hey, this is Catholic town and this is Christian town and this is Quaker town. And this is, so there was did a there, Quaker town. There's a Quaker town in Pennsylvania. I'm see. So that doesn't, it, it doesn't surprise me that I'm sure that's yeah. what happened is that you probably gravitated toward your people, your community Correct. around, based around exactly the church what, in uh, your yes, community. Exactly. Right. Makes so sense. I imagine that's probably what would have happened. Yeah. I don't obviously that would make sense to me, but I don't know. What I find interesting is like they went to specifically say freedom of religion. Yes. Correct. Where a lot of times people go, they break off, not just because they don't believe what you believe. They, they, they claim freedom, but it's really, I want you to, I want it to be my religion then. Right. Cause then that's my community. So like, I am Christian, for example, and I'm in Maryland, and they decide to be Catholic. I go, well, I want to be free. Well, you really don't want to be free. You just want to be Christian. You want to be your own. Right. Yeah, yeah. So we, it's funny how we sometimes, though, people take that guise of religious freedom really just to do their own, to start their own little cult yes. or group of yeah. whatever, right? It's really not to be free, in my opinion. But I know that's not It's weird. to worship on their own and not be persecuted. 
Yes, but it's also to develop their community of Christians. Right. So when they leave and go do their own thing, they can kick out. Somebody else is going to feel persecuted too. Right. And like it's just you going to happen I, over and over and over and over again. Where you and I are much more open about the idea of the freedom. Be like, oh, cool. You're Christian. You got a community. Cool. I'll, I'm going to hang out here and I'm not Christian. And from what you told me, you're cool with that. So we're good. Yeah, absolutely. Pa- pass the fucking Cheetos. They have Cheetos there? If they had Cheetos in the 1600s, I would have been. Are really they the flaming ones? That wasn't until like 2018, bro. Did they have Funyuns? <laughs> they had Andy Cap Hot Fries. Oh, sorry, what? Andy Cap Hot Fries? What? Do you remember Andy Cap Hot Fries? Oh, my God. Those? They're so good. Oh. They're the best flaming Dude, I'm hot hungry, anything. bro. Shut up. All right, we'll stop talking about that. God damn it. So, 1658. Yes, sir. Maryland became Catholic. Yes. Interesting. We're going to move it along now, yes, okay? We're gonna, I'm next. We're going to jump up to the Civil War. So in so we're eight, 1800, 100 eight, years after. 1864, yes. 1864, there were several... A lot of people... The, the gist of the story is a lot of people wrote letters to Congress stating they wanted In God We Trust put on money because they thought that was going to help win the war because it was a tough time. It's like praying. It's like praying. It's like public praying. On currency. So, um, in 1864 and 1865... What was the phrase again? In God We Trust. In God We Trust. Okay. Several uh, bills were put forth into Congress to put um, In God We Trust on the one, two, and five cent pieces. I don't know if they were silver or yeah, whatever, whatever they were Well, they were the time. worth the value of one, two, and five cents uh, probably. Correct. So, that was ratified. <laughs> Versus the penny now that costs like a dot, 1.9 cents to make or some shit. Oh, seriously? Yeah, no joke. Why, why do we even have that shit? Uh, what's funny is that there are like laws against smelting it. Smelting? Well, people would just grab pennies. They would buy millions of dollars of pennies, smelt them, and get two million back. What? Like double, almost double their money. You want to go in on that? No, because it's illegal, bro. Oh, okay. I am not. I do nothing. Where illegally. do we smelt them? Uh, in your smelta. <laughs> You, you got Spilkus in the connecting. You, you got, got one downstairs or what? <laughs> well, I've got a little oven, and it's, well, it's not that kind. It's a fucking it microwave. It's a microwave. Well, it gets a little sparky, but it's a, <laughs> sparky. it works. All no, right. but yeah, so it's like 1.9 cents to make a penny. Just say it. Why do we have them? That's the point. But don't go digital. That's a whole other problem. Anyway. Moving along. Moving along. So uh, in God We Trust. The In God We Trust stayed on the one, two, and five cent pieces, pieces. until 1883. And then they slowly faded away from, produ- they, they stopped being they produced. They stopped putting them on they there and then putting, they came out of they circulation stopped, eventually. They came out of circulation, basically, and yeah. stopped being produced. Um, they came back. I wonder how much the value of those are. Oh, those my God. Fucking coins of day. I know we keep going on tangents, but just that. Oh, the history, yeah. The value. If you had, a, if you had the, like, one, the first year, 1864, one, two, and five cent piece that yeah. reads in God's We Trust, and then had one of every year all the way to 83, was it? Correct. Okay. Imagine having like 20 of those, just 20 penny, like 20 single one cent pieces. It's like a million dollars. It's got to be so valuable. It's got to be. It's amazing. Or even if you had one from 1863. I wonder if it's illegal though, because it's no longer legal tender. So it's like one of those weird It'd things. It'd be even more of, valuable. Yeah, but I'm wondering, yeah, I guess, because I wonder if it's illegal to own. Remember how they bought all the gold at one point and then you couldn't hoard gold? They had to, the government bought it off you and then that's yes, a whole other. Yes, yes, I do thing. recall that's that. In, that was in, uh, in, that the, was, in the 30s. Uh, uh, Hoover. No. Hoover, yeah, 30s. thought it was FDR. It might have been FDR. It was FDR or Hoover. Because Hoover was right before FDR, right? The Hoover Dam and all that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's because of the Depression. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It, it could be FDR. I, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But anyway, so imagine that it's fucking a piece of history. It says, in God we trust, a long time before it's like, now it's everywhere. Yes. Which we'll get to. So it disappeared in 1983. Sorry, 1883. Jesus. 18. That's a different. That's 83. A difference. If if my math is correct, that's at least oh. at least 230 years difference. 100. 1883. Oh, I yeah. said 1983. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not good at math. <laughs> I got so. the math down wrong. Not so good. But I read real good. Terrible. Lee. Bad grammar. Lee. Grammatically. <laughs> Uh, it was just dis- disappeared slowly in 1883. Stop this 1983 shit, man. Uh, the, the problem is, is the next statement. It started to be re 
printed on coins in 18, I'm sorry, 1908. So Why? coins 25 oh. years after it was out of circulation. Correct. So exactly 25 years. 1908. I don't know why. On coins. Now, coins. it was always on coins to begin with because it's never, it hadn't been on currency yet. Correct, correct, sir. So it's been on coins this whole time. Yes. Reintroduced in 1908. Yes, Do you sir. have any backstory uh, as no, to what I didn't. that is? I just wrote it down and moved okay. along. No, it's totally we, fine. I can look no. it up, but I don't give no, a shit. No, because I'm more worried about the currency. I'm more worried as we, about Because as we currency. grew to a more of a cat, like a big currency thing versus yes. pennies in our fucking pockets. Schvelting. It's schmelting. Schmelting. And you schmelt in a schmelta. <laughs> it's hot in here, bro. <laughs> you shelter in a schmelta, schmelta. Um, <laughs> so in... Can I get a lozenge, please? Yes, you may. I Would you like a Ricola? Ricolas. So in 1956, moving... Oh, I'm sorry. I missed one. 1950, yeah, 1954. That's a big one. During the Cold War, President Eisenhower added... To the Pledge of Allegiance under God. As in one nation, comma. Under God. Indivisible. indivisible and all that stuff. And the reasons behind that is, are very important. The, this, we've had a Facebook off about this statement. We did? Yeah, because someone asked, should under God be removed from the pledge? Okay. And I thought we had a little conversation about that. Possibly not. But P- um, Enlighten me, please. Well, I just... it. It it was put in for a specific reason. It was to, it was God was going to help us, kind of like they were going to help us. the Russians, this, right? Because if you weren't a, it's very much similar to today's recent uh, uh, political climate. Is that the best way to say it? Sure. If you weren't explicitly for something, you were automatically against it. So by having under God, you're now stating you're American and not a communist. That's my opinion on that. If you had to explicitly say it, it's like certain phrases that we have nowadays that if you don't agree with those phrases, you are against them somehow. Like if you don't explicitly say you are for it, you know what I mean? Yes. So that's explicitly I'm, stupid. I know. I'm trying to be very vague because I'm, I, this is, we're not. We're not trying to get po- sociopolitical and get attacked for from all sides. But basically, <laughs> well, it's like saying, by saying under God, they're basically making you commit to being I understand. American. Well, they, they, they all, but the government said that, hey, we need God's help to beat the Russians. Right. And we need all of America to get on this bandwagon. Right. This is the challenge, though. By saying freedom of religion... Even though Jefferson and everyone had their God, some people's their God is no God. Yeah. No one spoke ever, it doesn't look like, about what if you don't have a God, right? Because the assumption was just everybody had one, but it was theirs. So do you think, are you talking about atheism? Yeah, basically. I mean, Okay, so... When do you think... Because it doesn't say faith. It speaks of Freedom God. of religion. Right. Freedom of religion be- for their own God. Right. Right. That In his letter that he wrote. In, yes. In, in yes. 08. Or 02, 1802. 1802, yes. So are you saying that there always have been atheists, but they just only spoken up in the past 25 years? No, I'm saying that... The culture of the world at the time, just like when they thought the earth was flat. Yeah. At one point. Yeah. That God existed for everyone. Yeah. Every civilized human on the earth had a higher power belief in some. That was, that's at least the assumption that they're going with. All of the founding fathers were Americans did have a God. It was their God. Even in 1954. Right. And they're saying their God. I'm I'm just talking even back then, but the founding back fathers never when? spoke of no God. I'm talking about 1776, okay. 1802. Okay. They never spoke of no God. Correct. Because the assumption was that everybody had a God. Right. It's really weird. So technically, freedom of religion, uh, atheism, I guess, is atheism just a faith? It's not really a religion. No, it's not a faith or a religion. So it's a, are they it's no faith or no religion? So are they protected? 
in that case? I don't fucking know. Is it almost like a sect that's not protected because they're like outside of the Venn diagram of being covered? Because they're not, not only do they, it's not their God, there is no God to them. So their God is no God. But the assumption was by the founding fathers that everyone had that's a, a God. fucking crazy question, man. Is that does that blow your fucking mind? Yeah, because and I'm not even on mushrooms, bro. <laughs> <laughs> What's it called? Psilocybin? Psilocybin, bro. Psilocybin. But that's Colorado. Legalized. We should go to Colorado. We should. Um, I don't think so. I don't think they're protected because obviously not. I mean, obviously, like, it seems weird, right? Because if you don't have a god, you're not protected. Because atheism yeah. is not a religion. But there is it's, a it's church lack, of atheism there's that a is lack, a religious sect. Shut up, it is? Yeah, there's a church of atheists. But that's How can the it point. be a church if you don't... But that's, but that's the point, because it is a... Well, it is still a faith. No, it's, it's a not. Fa- it's a faith that everything we see is as is, that there is no higher power. It's a lack it, of faith. It's actually a... This was no. not on the agenda, sir. I know, man. <laughs> I, look, I'm sorry. No, Shit pops fine. into my head. No, no, no. Man. I like this. Go. I, I think I... I mean, that's the point, is like... After just hearing that letter about their God, I'm like, well, they all had faith in a God. And so you, what is faith in no God? Like, d- does that are you exempt from being American if you have no God? Because their God doesn't exist. Like, their God isn't a thing. What happens to those people? Are they protected under that First Amendment to practice that? To like, practice not worshiping, right? Like. I, 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 I don't know. I just, I don't know. Maybe I'm just full of shit. I, I don't know, man. Or n- so that, that, exa- that same statement, let me ask you that same statement that you said about 1776, 1802, they assumed everybody had a God. Do you think that's the same fact in 1954? No, I don't think that because Darwinism started to come. I mean, there's a lot of things that came to prominence that started shitting on God in that the 1800s was that what age of reason and all that no that was the industrial revolution well yeah but the but age that, of reason I mean, the age of enlightenment there was an age of enlightenment that really went scholarly and very sciencely and took and started stepping away from god later okay but still the general people believed yeah in i something. would say the vast yes, majority. majority but i'm just talking 54 i was just trying to bifurcate 54 and 1802 i'm just trying to say 54 jefferson didn't write under god we signed no. it in because of the Red Scare. In my opinion, the, the Red, Red scare. scare. And to say under God means you're not a communist. That's because communists didn't believe in God. That's kind of like thought by. Oh, yeah, I opinion. totally agree. And I get what you're saying. But my but going back now, what if I mean, it only clearly states about their God. Well, What if my God's not a thing? What if my I don't have one? You mean an atheist? Yes. Okay. What if I don't have one? Am I now not protected? That sure sounds like it. It seems weird, right? Like, yeah. I'm, so is that a loophole? Is that how people of religions are really persecuting people of non-faith? Because non-faith, to your point, isn't a religion. It's a it's a lack of a religion. I'm, I mean, right? You're you're not going to the church of not believing. Like, if you and I don't have faith in that way, we don't have. We're not Catholics say. and not. Well, we're not Catholics and we're not Christian, right? We're not right. really Catholics. You and I are pretty agnostic atheists, whatever we are. But we're not worshiping that in any way. We're just not going to church and worshiping the religion that we grew up with, with which we grew up. R- right. So, yeah, it's not a religion. I don't think it is. So, how can you have a are church we free of to practice? I mean, I guess maybe that's the thing. By by it not being religion, it doesn't need to be protected because it's not part of the freedom of religion. Because it's not a religion, it's just back to your human rights. I, I wonder. I I don't know. I'm sure someone's talked about this before, and I'm probably just talking completely out of my asshole. <laughs> <laughs> that would sound like. Yeah, I just asked really basic. It, you know those people that say don't reinvent the wheel. You I just, go, how can I reinvent this motherfucker? Is that, That's you know me. what? I, I was thinking about a statement you said about 19 podcasts ago. <laughs> that sounds like the worst idea in the world. What time do I show up? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is the worst ideal I've ever heard. What time you want me there? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Which one was that? that? Was a good one. That was the that Captain was... America check mark. Oh, that's beautiful. Superhero one. No, that's was the it? worst. I think it was a nineteen insults, but I could be wrong. <laughs> that's that's sounds... the worst idea ever. What time you want me there? <laughs> That's good. I don't know why I think that's so funny. <laughs> it is. It's great. Because you and I have bad judgments. Oh, judgment, dude, sir. that's so hilarious. You know what? Like, I think I am the most lucky. I've made bad <gasps> decisions and I haven't gotten burned to the point I probably should have. Ah, oh, that's hilarious. So, yeah, it's very religious. So, Is Check Mark Fortu looking for the Church of Atheism? I am Fortu. No, I like the vodka. I, I practice Church of the Smirnoff. <laughs> Stolisnaya, please. Slowly. All that. Wutka. Okay. Thank you, Ricky Schroeder's thumb. That was an excellent point. <laughs> you need to... You need to We're going to uh, totally explain that next you time. You need to tweet Ricky Schroeder. I will. To Ricky Schroeder's thumb. See if he can get on, the, get on the show. <laughs> Dearest Ricky Schroeder's thumb. Oh, my God. That would be the most Love you so much. Check mark. Conversation. Tell me about Aaron things. Gray. And how hot she was Fuck, on Silver Buck Spoons. Rogers in that well, outfit. Well, Silver Spoons. Remember, because that's how he knew her. Yeah, he but didn't know her. I know, but he didn't know her in Buck Rogers. He knew her then. And ask him if Alfonso Ribeiro and him diddled each other. As well. <laughs> so, like, I don't know. Oh, Before they, Let's, is that on you? Oh, how about we swear to never use the word diddle? I think we should ask Alfonso Ribeiro to come on and go, Ricky or Will? Now, decide. Oh, dude. His busy, he's busy on the PGA. Wasn't he in Silver Spoons? Please tell me that Alfonso Ribeiro was in the he's, he's, the t- he's the host of the PGA Tour of Champions. He's also on the like golf the horse of like Card Sharks or some fucking ridiculous oh, show. God. 21 or well, some weird cares. fucking... Yeah, I know. I agree. It's cool, man. Alfonso, you, you've carved out a really nice career for yourself on the coattails of Will Smith. So congratulations. I, and, and he's a good golfer. And he's a good dancer, apparently. Yeah. They make him do the dance though on every tee box. Oh, it's and that's horrible. Every fucking tee box. Like I, I think the first tee at every every tournament he has to. He, oh, they make him do the Carlton. Dude, don't sell out, bro. Well, that's what he's known for. It sucks. I yeah, feel- but you don't you don't hear fucking Keanu Reeves go, whoa, instead of four. <laughs> do you? <laughs> whoa. Uh, I don't. I don't think so. Right. So he's not a sellout. Of course, he did Bill and Ted's after being woke and all his new thing, which I it what? looks. It's gotten good reviews. It looks really funny. Is it really? Can it really be, though? I don't know. It can't be funny. It just looks funny before you watch it, right? I don't know. Because the first one's so good. It is. Like, I, I give it props. When they were nobodies. I mean, Keanu fucking Reeves came from like, whoa, uh, 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 so crates and fucking <laughs> shit. Like, he came for that shit and then became like this real, like, John Wick. Like, it's a very heady character. I mean, I know it sounds simple. And Neo. Like, just, yeah, Neo. They're all very existential yeah and this has to do with religion how time travel bro <laughs> that's how it has to do with religion you just wanted to hit dive all right I moving just wanted, along yeah we're moving after along. 1954 54, the pledge so pledge allegiance. now you and i both are in agreement that the reason it was put in was specifically for the communist red scare and all and billy graham's pushing of it right yes the lobbyists boom there's your lobby sir billy graham had to have been a fucking lobbyist. Well, m- maybe. I don't know. He was pushing for this to get done. How else would it get done? What influence would I have a politician to get done other than my belief in yours? However, I believe in the United States saying we should separate church and state. What what incentive would you have for me other than a payoff and bribe, some kind of influence the other way, right? There's a payoff. There's a lobby. It's a lobby. Right? I see your point. If I'm a if I'm a politician and, and Billy Graham comes up to me, right? It was a Billy Graham. Yeah, we, he's the first guy to ever give a speech on the White House steps. And he's like, I'm sorry, the c- Capitol Hill. Oh, hi y'all! I'm Billy Graham. I nice shake your hand. I got slick back hair. My nice eight thousand dollar roll. Is that bro. how he sounds? I don't fucking know, man. <laughs> he's around. I don't even know if he's around. I know you're around. talking out of his son. I heard his. I think one of another Graham. Fuck that. Whatever. Anyway, I just hear him go, "Hey, man." Um, we're trying to get under God and we're trying to get God everywhere, written, seen, everything we talk about. Cause we believe in God. I know the, the country does, but we do, you know, we need to influence you. And well, yeah, but I also believe in the United States and freedom of, you know, separation of church and state. Why would I put under God and everything? What can I do for you to make you want to put under God and everything? That's the next question. Right? That was OJ. 
what can I do for you? No, I thought that was Southern. What can I do for Hello, y'all? Twitter world. Hello, what can I do for y'all to make y'all make God put on the pledge and maybe a little bit on the dollar bill later? So 54 pledge. So I you think, think Billy off. Graham gave him a million dollars? I just think he obviously lobbied for it. I'm thinking what else, what talks and what walks? Cash. Money talks and bullshit blackmail. walks, right? So like cash. Well, blackmail would be fine. Blackmail is always a threat thing, but generally you want to be friendly, right? Because you want to keep going back to the vagina, pie. paying out. It could be hook, maybe a hook, hook, hook and blow. Hey, I got this hook and blow, y'all. Who wants? Who wants to come over, over y'all? yonder? Who wants to come over y'all and get some of this hooker? Is that foghorn leghorn? It was. It was a very bad. I say, I say. Did a big rooster pay them off? Maybe Richard Trivin said. God, he fuck. said, "Who wants hookers that blow?" I'm going to get a Nerf gun, and every time you do versus drive, I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to lose both eyes very quickly. Good thing you have your protective goggles on. I do. I've got my Wilt Chamberlain goggles or the uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Kareem, yes. Kareem goggles. And with the sky hook. All oh, right. Man. I don't know what you're talking about, kid. My dad says you don't play so good. <laughs> Look, Fucking kid. Look. 48 minutes running up down you the try, court. You try to keep up with Worthy. So and after 54, the Pledge of Allegiance in 1956, President Eisenhower... We just go right back. Decreed as the national motto, in God we trust. So Eisenhower's 54. President Eisenhower. And Eisenhower's 56. So now we have the president directly after Roosevelt or after Truman. Truman. Because Roosevelt. Truman was the vice president when Roosevelt passed. Correct. Became the president. Yes. And then Eisenhower. Eisenhower in 50. So it is the president. The next president outside of World War II. Correct. It's really the next chapter of the United States. Correct. In a post-war, pre-Cold War. The suburban boom. Right. The baby boomers, all that. Correct. But coming out of fighting this war against Nazis and the rise of communism. Correct. Out of fighting the Nazis. Yes. Strange, right? Crazy shit. These power vacuums, man. Right? It's like, no matter what, if a power vacuum exists, some motherfucker's going to fill that thing. Uh, yeah. So Eisenhower Back did... Back to you, Frank. Pledge? He did. In God We Trust as a motto. Yes. And then... And no, a year later, 1957, uh, on, the dollar bi- on the dollar bill and the dollar silver certificate, In God We Trust was added to the paper dollar bill. And then that set of precedents. And every, it's been that way ever since. It's been that way ever since. 57. 1957. Correct? And I'm assuming, I haven't looked, but I'm assuming it's on the 5 and the 20 and the 10 and the 50. I, yeah, it's, and it's on all, it's written yeah, on all It's on every currency. bill. Let me grab my $1 bill and see if it is. I mean, because I don't have anything bigger than a $1 bill. Ow. Whoa. In ow we trust? I think I just broke a hip. Ooh. I'm hip. I'm broken hip. Just read it. Is it on there? It's on there. It's on everyone. Don't lie. Ooh, I got a 10. Dude, you got enough singles to go to Jaguars. Like, I think I went to Chubby Dale's last night. Nice. In God We Trust, there right there is. on the back. Yeah, I, I think it'll make my skin burn if I touch it. In God We Trust on the back of the 10. Oh, there it is. So it sets a precedence. Now, all of these are during Eisenhower's career, but he didn't actually sign it as the president. He didn't sign it in, or did he? Well, I'm assuming it had to go through Congress and Senate. Right, it because they are the exe- they are the legislative branch. They are the correct. lawmakers, correct? Correct. So it had to come across his desk to sign into, or could they supersede him with, obviously, if he no, vetoes? No, it, it has to go through both. It's a law. It has to go through both right. houses. And then and get then, sent to the president. Correct. So the president signed off on the, mo- the uh, pledge, I the motto, and the dollar, well, and the dollar bill, because it was 54 to 57. It was during Eisenhower's yes. career. During Eisenhower's tenure, he, all of these things happened. Yes. Damn. That's a really strong, that's, that's an enemy, man. No, I mean, does, is that an enemy of freedom? I, 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 uh, or is it like that's a means to an end? Like, we need everybody, we need all hands on deck. We need to be well, so together. Well, let's, let, let's, let's approach it differently. Okay. Let's say... Let's say you're Jewish during that time and you see these things happening. Let's say you're a Jewish 10-year-old and you go to school Monday morning and the Pledge of Allegiance is different. And hey, dad, let's say your dad didn't get the paper that weekend. 
And hey, Dad, I had to, the Pledge of Allegiance was different. I now have to say, in God we trust. And he goes, what? Or under God, yeah. Under God. I'm Same sorry. Same thing. Yes, it's okay. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, under just God, specific. indivisible, blah, blah, blah. So do they... I think they put out a presser, bro. I bet you every I, I, school I, I, got sent on the 1st of October, we're going to start using Boom. Dude, this was 1957. And they used to, there right, was, they had PA systems and they probably read that over the PA. They probably yeah, read the pledge they, over the PA. They probably did. I'm assuming. I, I could be wrong, but I'm thinking, remember, remember these these mm-hmm. educational institutions that we talk about, schools were really designed to be conscript. It was for conscripted soldiers to learn the same fucking basic tasks over and over again. That's what school, the modern school, is based on. I don't know if you knew that. But it was to make it standardized so that you could get through life of what they needed you to do. It's very That was the idea of school. So it makes sense that they would read it very regimented, very soldier-like, very structured. But if you were, my point is, I I understand. I understand. If you were a non-Christian family, would you... What would you think about that in 1957? In my opinion, America was a favorable thing to be in the world's eyes. America was like it. Yeah. Right? We we won the war. The, the economy For was on the rise. Purpose, we won the war. The war. Correct. We... Russia had saviors. We were so the saviors. much. Right. Russia had so much to do with key, staving off Hitler. Yeah. And eventually, I think that would have won. But they lost like tens of millions. They lost ten million, like almost 30, eleven million. I think I yeah. looked it up. It was eleven okay. million. It is a shit ton. And there are there are things talking about how how heroic Russians are. And yeah. yes, Russia w- vital because it was on that landmass. I mean, they had to that yeah. that kept it in check until we kind of swept up. Correct. He, Let's not kid ourselves. I mean, we, right. Joe, don't get me wrong. We had all the put all the resources to it and did it, and we lost so many lives. Four hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, we lost so much. We sacrificed a lot, and it wasn't even on our landmass on our. Mm-hmm. Understand. But we, the bigger picture was obviously Hitler not getting any more power. Mo made told it had to be over. Um, but um, I think everyone believed in America. So, like, mom, they just said, "God, oh shit, I don't believe in God," but it's America, so just go along with it. Like, go along with it because you believe in the country. So just say what they tell you to do at school. It's school. Listen to your elders. I don't think they, I don't even think few people would have been activist about it. Well, there was, no, in 1957, the word activist didn't exist. I know. I don't think so. Not really. Until, the, until 60, Vietnam. Probably Vietnam. is so, really when the and, activist existed. And when did even, in, and then in Vietnam, we started in 63, 62 is when the first mm-hmm. people got there, but when did Vietnam protests even start? 66? When we started really seeing the company. Yeah. Maybe. When, when journalists, I think, started being embedded in the troops, when we started seeing it, that's when we really, I think, turned. And that was early. I mean, it was early enough for us to be like, this doesn't seem right. And there was a whole mental movement. I mean, we got out of this, rid- this the children of the fucking baby boomers, the baby boomers themselves were the hippies, right? Yes. So the children of the World War II generation... Say you're born in 44, 45. My mom, It's yeah. 69. You're 24 years old. You're right in that youth. Yes, correct. That is exactly where you're like, all we knew was war in our childhood or coming yeah. out of that war, McCarthyism, yeah. Cold War. Yeah. Can't we just have peace? Yeah. You just went 180. Yeah, it just did course. 180. And yeah. that, look, I, it, you know, strategically political, not taking a political side, but Trump's victory in 2016, the youth were antithesis of Barack Obama's youth, the two elections prior. They flipped, yeah. The children were now a conservative movement had taken over Mm -hmm. enough to win the electoral votes to win the election. Not to win the popular vote, but I'm I'm an electoral college guy, so that's how it is. I'm not. Really? We should, maybe we should, I don't know if we should touch that one. I love you, man. I love you too much. But I, don't I, think I mean, we'll I, break I agree up. with you. No, I don't think we break up. I just think that I don't feel like four cities should elect every president. I do, bro. But one of those cities is Philadelphia. They got water. <laughs> <laughs> all the loggers, they got bro. Chicago over there with the all the loggers, yeah. deep dish pizza, fuck and that. Philly cheese steak. No, I love dude, all pizzas. I'm not a deep disher though. I love all the skinny I, pizza, fat pizzas, all the pizzas. I'm sure Chicago is a great town. I've been there. Me I've too. Been there once. 
I'm sure it's a great town. I'm sure it has a lot of friends. I'm just not one of them. <laughs> I'm an East Coast guy, bro. I can't help it. But anyway. I love all the um, coasts. I think it was that flip-flop, right? Those kids the became. Flip? The flop flips. It was those kids that became peace because they grew up with war. Like, it just was a 180. You just do exactly opposite what your parents do. I mean, it's kind of very telling. You look, at the, look at every election. It's like. Republican, Democrat, Republican. I mean, it's like Kennedy, Johnson, right? Nixon. Nixon, four, Nixon the rest of four, then Carter, yep. Reagan, yep. Clinton. Yep. That's how it always... Reagan, Bush won, but only one term, yeah. Yeah. right? So technically, it's kind of in that it's window, 16 years. Right. Correct. It's 16 years, not 20, where you usually get both. But then Clinton for two terms. Yes. Then Bush, two for two terms, yes. then Obama for two terms. Yes. This is just not a... No, it's an it's easy pattern. very patterny. Pat- patterny. It's patterny for sure, right? So it's just whether this guy who's in now is going to keep it or lose it. That's all it is, whether it's a one or two term thing. That's all. But it's very patterny. Very patterny. Patterny. It's weird. Anyway. so <laughs> We need just to come on as uh, Trump again and say, that. that's very patterny. Uh, I need to have her. Where is the best, most factual documentation in the world? <laughs> so I, still have to, I still have to pull it. It's fucking, I can't even do it. And I, li- I like to pride myself on impressions. And that was the best one I still, to this day. Where are we at, man? All I'm right. Sorry. So I, I after can't get the shit out 1957, of this place. we had the paper money, which is huge. 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 It's going to be big. It's going to be huge. Huge in Japan. Give me orange. So, give, me, give me my haircut. That sounded like Bernie Sanders. That was weird. <laughs> I don't know why I want to go and have the communists come and I want them to have pay for everything and I want them to buy everything. I don't know. It's, that sounded like Larry Sanders. That they, They're the exact same. Oh, yeah, because person. he does they're it old. on SNL. <laughs> <It's exact. laughs> it was my... <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> it was my impression. Of Larry Sanders. Of his impression yeah, of him. Br- yeah, okay. Yeah. So that's the end of the chronological timeline. Okay. The next note is the fact that... Uh, so in 57... Paper and then precedence since Yeah, there then, hasn't but, been a change since right, then. There has not been a change. Has not that you've researched that, but has there been a movement at some point to actually have a bill come up, even to the point where a president vetoed not removing or vetoed removing it? Not that I neither have I. I, I th- stopped after fifty seven right, I didn't look because right. I know it was on the bill as of today. Right. So now are you offended that it's on the bill though? That's you, I mean, that's a question. Like, yeah. Okay. And that's everyone. That's a personal question. Everyone's either going to be the, or not be. The country is a bullshit founded, thing to put is, on the, there. The country's founded on religious freedom, right? And the fact that right, no God, but no God isn't a religion. So, but I don't know. But what I'm just happens? What okay, okay, hang on. So it is found. You're correct. What if? What if I believed in many gods? What if I was a Viking? You can do or that. an Egyptian you can or a that. Roman, and, right. I and then it doesn't say in gods we trust. Correct. Good point. So you're fucking smart. This you're is, goddamn right. I you, am. You God's damn God's right. damn it. God's damn it. <laughs> so, sir, but, you and I. This is why you and I have this because that is a point I would have totally skirted over about the gods thing, which is a conversation we need to have about why did we go from polytheism to monotheism? We talked about that. So that's an interesting topic, but we'll table that for now. I can tell you why. I know why, but is that really a our conversation or not? Yeah, Let's we table can, that. Yeah. Well, so I think we can make an hour conversation of what, what am I holding in my hand right now? You're not your wiener. <laughs> I was going to say <laughs> that too. I was like, bro, oh, bro. <laughs> so, what am I holding in my hand right now? Your fist. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking dork. Damn, I know. I love you, man. Paper, rock, scissors. So, um, did you see that Friends episode where they did paper, rock, scissors? And Joey goes like this? No, flame to burn he, everything? He goes, fire. fire I win. Fire, I win. <laughs> so, oh. uh, anyway, yeah, yeah, what if... Because what if there's a movement in the next 500 years and we go back to many gods? I don't don't know. No. What about the current person who believes in Jupiter and Mars right now? Yeah. The fucking person who believes in it now is reading in God we trust and he has, he believes in gods. Is there, you're shitting on. Is that person still exist? Question is this. Can they, I'm got, I've got a counter to this now. Now that you made me think about it. 
because you know that's one again that's why you have He's, me on the show I'm sorry well this is why you have You're me welcome. on the show because i got witty comebacks i have you on the show because you got witty questions so we've got boom bro yes there is still a hierarchy of the gods zeus is the god so in god we trust saying zeus so it covers everybody boom done that, i'm just saying that's a way to explain i don't, I don't accept that you don't have to for me to tell you it's bullshit it's not I, your your response is bullshit. It is. It's total horseshit. But that would be, well, Zeus is your main god because it is a hierarchy. There isn't. There... I understand. <laughs> the point is, on Battlestar Galacta, when you, when you say "gods damn it," right? It doesn't. It says "in gods we trust" on their money. Do you think? Have you seen their currency? It has to. Do they even use currency as they're on you the? Remember run they had those the little triangles? Ones? Oh yeah. When they went betting, they're betting their little yeah. triangle chips. Yeah. That's a great question. It is. Hello, Twitter world. What do you think about such a thing? If you have a belief, if your religion is the God's religion, are you offended that it says in God we trust on the currency? Yeah. And stuff. Thank you, Ricky Schroeder's thumb. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, the next point is the fact that uh, throughout history – the last 150 years or so um, regarding government buildings and putting God like engraved on the building or any type of reference of God, the Supreme court has been inconsistent in its rulings regarding that, whether it's actually in God we trust or a phrase or in reference to God or any kind of a statue or any kind of anything the reference Ten commandments on the front well, of the that's, courthouse. That's not, we'll get to that. Oh, but, okay. That's separate from you know, what you're the, talking about. Correct. Okay, in the past 150 sure. years, there's, Oh, Hey, the Alaska state courthouse, we want to put in God, we trust on the building. Well, in one Supreme court ruling, they ruled in favor and then Michigan comes in and they ruled against it. So they've been very inconsistent. Those states are arbitrary. I just made that up. No, no, but I get it. They've get been it. very inconsistent in their rulings regarding government buildings and the use of the word God, either engraved in the building or somehow to fix uh, presented from associated with the building in some way. Correct. So I found the interesting that there was a lack of consistency over the years regarding just the word itself and regarding state or federal property interesting that the first judgment unless they're nuancedly different wouldn't have set precedence for the rest i thought the same thing because if i were this i mean the supreme court can change in its conservative and and yeah, progressive thoughts with the five to four vote and all that shit yeah. appointing and people passing away and appointing new ones correct but the constitution man that that's one of the challenges like some of those judges are very biased Oh and yeah, they're not as constitutional as I I would personally like them to be. I think, but yeah, it's weird that it's so inconsistent because you would think like, let's say, exa and unless they're ex you know, it has to be the exact thing. Like, I want to we're Alaskan. We say I want to engrave in God we trust. We're Michigan. I want to engrave in God we trust. One says yes, one says no. If they're exact apples to apples, exact arguments, and they're that inconsistent, that's scary. Unless they're 100 years apart. 100 years apart would make sense, right? Or, I mean, because yeah. the way people think, Changes. 100 years apart it is so change. vastly yeah. different. I mean, even if you're the technology, let's just say 1850 to 1950, huge difference. 2010 to 2020. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's... I mean, we're just... In just 10 years. You know, right. Yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. Say, just where, where we're at in the exponential growth right. of it. Right, Absolutely. You know, imagine theirs though. They're doubling what doubling meant to them. Like their exponential growth meant to them. Oh yeah. It must've been like a fucking wild ride. You know, we're kind of, a, we're kind of used to that explosion of like uh technology and whatever. So. Absolutely right. Yeah. The, so as a non-God person, you don't have a religion. So you not having a religion, having God on there, because, see, that's the thing. It wasn't added until we realized that there are some people who don't have a belief in God. That's what, that's what bothers me is the timing of it. If it was put on in 1776, under the guise of the Jefferson idea that everyone to their God, but they all have one, I'm much more open to that being part of the lexicon of the United States. Right? 
I don't understand. You may not agree with it. If In God We Trust was put on dollar one, the oh, in seventeen seventy six, right? When in whatever, when we had our currency, when we the Fed, right, or whatever the Federal Reserve, like Hamilton created that or something, or who? His name is Alexander <laughs> Hamilton. This one's for you, Megzi. Alexander Hamilton. Thank God I haven't um, seen that shit show. I have not either. I've heard it, and while I was completely doing other things, again and again, again. Uh, like, and again yeah. and again and again. What's in my hand, sir? You're you're gonna beat yourself my, with your fist. Uh, <laughs> But his Why name is Alexander Hamilton. Up? Hamilton. His name is Hamilton. Shut if up. It, if it was put in the beginning of that, like in the beginning, I'm I'm good with it because I, now I understand your point. That thought process yes. was everyone had a God. It yes. just was what who their God was. That's the separation, and we're clear. Yes. But now we throw in, wait a minute, there's people who actually don't have a God. Well, I they didn't have that forethought. They really didn't. And but to see it coming in the fifties, oh, and, and I understand that was the fifties, nineteen fifty four. That was sixty five years ago, right? Right. And and, and and perhaps my perception's incorrect. I don't think nineteen fifty four was that long ago. And, and physically wasn't no. I mean, in the span of the country, it was like what a quarter of 20, the year. twenty twenty. It's, it was twenty five percent of the country. We're three, quarters, ago. we're three quarters. Yeah, we're three quarters so, old. Right. I, I don't think sixty five years ago was that long ago. It doesn't. It seems somewhat recent, and maybe my perception is wrong. We have not lived through a world war. We True. have not lived through Vietnam. We the the most radical thing you and I have experienced, which we weren't even alive, would have been gas shortage in the seventies, which we didn't really affected, or Persian Gulf. Yeah, the two Gulf we Wars. We haven't had. We don't realize how lucky we are. As I America. agree. We are in the most as as chaotic and crazy as it fucking seems out there, because of the social media and all the advertising of it and all the pushing of it. We're in the pretty much the most peaceful time ever, ever. We don't have a global world power that's actually knocking on anyone's door. We've got some guy with a really shitty haircut north of a really cool country who makes a lot of cool cars and, and makes Samsung TVs, right? And he, I, 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 he just blabbers on, but he's not knocking on anyone's door about invading. He's not going to ta- hurt anyone. You know what I mean? Like, there is no global threat other than economically maybe with China and things like that, but it's it's nothing like what I can't imagine what my parents experienced. You know? Yeah. So to that end, 60 years in time is not anything, but there it's a huge cultural shift. Oh yeah. That time. Matt, that, yeah. That, yes. The cultural shift. Yeah. That's a very good point. That's massive. Right. But, so this is where the, this is where it gets weird. We add in God, we trust the bill. Obviously Billy Graham wanted God on there regardless, but I could see somebody going, well, we need God on our side. You know, remember the whole civil war thing, right? It's like almost like openly praying by printing it on the money. This was more for the, to prove that you were an American. Cause we all talked about God as an American, God and country. But that's a newer phrase. Right. But I'm just that saying was in 1954. No, but you were not communist, right? If, if you were not God, you were communist. Like people. Yeah, call I you understand. Yes. It was just such a close. They just didn't understand. They were so myopic in their thoughts. Yes, like yes. this didn't get it. So you come out of that, I understand for a period and, but backing up now and going, you know, when we, when we did that, we had this philosophy, we no longer have that philosophy. Therefore we're going to remove it. The way I see it is what about masks with COVID? It's like, there's a time, you know, these anti-maskers, are like, oh, my fucking freedoms. I'm like, but it's not dumb just to put a mask on. If you have a mask and I have a mask, the transmission's lower. That's just a fact. There's, that is a fact. That is just a factual thing. If you're covered mouth and my covered mouth and we're six feet apart, the likelihood is much less than if we were uncovered and talking within two inches of each other. But people are like, that's my freedom. Like, it's almost like, guys, can we just well, be smart it, about could it? Could it be both? Could yes. it be their freedom and exactly what you're saying that the transmission it's is smart, a lot less? Right, but it's smart just to do it, not because it's infringement on your freedoms. I don't wear a mask out in public because it's an infrin because I believe in infringing on my rights. I am the least person to have my rights infringed upon, I would think. 
you know me pretty well. Yes, yeah. So for me to wear a mask, like, well, that's just his logic. Why does why does the fucking pounding the fist of freedoms even override logic? It doesn't even make sense. That's where sometimes the freedom gets a little crazy. So like that's the mask wearing, in my opinion, is like once this pandemic wears off, if we're still forced to wear a mask, then I'll have an issue because it's not logical anymore. Right. But the, the dollar being written on the dollar bill, that needs to be removed, in my opinion. Or should be, because we're in a different time than we were when we put it on. Very different. Right. And the reasoning for it is all it's, it's gone. bullshit. The it's Soviet back, Union right. crumbled 30 and years it, ago. And it's fucking Billy Graham pushing this time, this at this time. And I'm wondering, did Billy Graham... And I'm not... I mean, obviously, if I were the head of the thing that I was pushing, I'd be pushing for it, too, if that's what I believed. Did he do that to gain followers? I mean, just so that he could grow his flock? Was it, is it that simple? I believe he he was really the first televangelist, would you say? Yes. So as Kennedy was the first televised president, yeah. you've got this figure, poster child for God. He probably is going to do everything he can. I mean, it's going to be beneficial to him. Ultimately, it moves, it, it, it advances his cause. So that makes total sense. Whatever way, whether it's financially flock, people, just the idea of God. Because he'd rather have you be a Catholic than a non-Christian. Of course. He'd rather you be a Southern Baptist than a, non- yeah. than a non-Christian. And to that end, once again, I was wrong. Southern Methodists are not the people at Chick-fil-A. Southern Baptists are Chick-fil-A. Yes, sir. So I apologize for my incorrectness in, Last the, in one of the in the beer Googles episode, I believe. Yes, it was. sir. Favorite entree side and drink. Yes, sir. So I want to clear that up. As yes, because well. I'm you know, the one thing you and I are always been is very brutally honest about our mistakes. Oh, like, yeah. And that's the only way we can get we can move forward is if we're both playing with under the guise of fair play. Agreed. Then we can move forward. Jace. All right, so where Speaking are we at? of moving forward, sir. Yes. I just fucking rambled for no reason. That, yeah. Um, that's 13 minutes that Elise is not going to get back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so moving along, uh, we are going to read off. There's a certain uh, very, very small religious organization that I will not be revealing their name. But I will tell you about them, and I will tell you on how I believe some of their rights have been infringed upon, my opinion. And then Checkmark can tell me if he thinks I'm right or not. So wait, how are we going to do this? I'm going to tell you about them. You're going to tell me about, like, what are you going to tell me about? I'm going to tell you their seven tenets. They have ten, what they believe. Okay. So they're, they're like, they're, what their would they, basic belief systems. So they're, they're seven commandments. Yes, that's correct. They're seven uh, commandments. What of they, this, whatever this religion you're going to share with me. Correct. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm game. And then a couple of their little battles they have been having to deal with okay. around the country. And we'll go from there. Okay. Sounds and good. that's it. And no more. And, period. and 42 tangents in between that point and the end. Yes. Number one, one should strive to act with compassion and empathy toward all creatures in accordance with reason. Compassion, empathy to all creatures within reason. Uh, in accordance with reason. Yeah. So within re- anything within reason that you can be compassionate and empath- empathetic toward yes, sir. all creatures. Correct, sir. As long as it's reasonable. Yes, sir. Like, for example, I think in this case... We talked about Janus, right? If there's an ant in front of you, yes, you don't stop I recall on that. It, I thought of that too. But if you're running out of a burning building and you happen to step on it running away to save your own life, that's, that's unfortunate. Okay. It's accepted. Yes, sir. It's, it's okay. Within no reason, fact. It's within reason, In right? accordance in, with reason. That's reasonable that I you're agree. running away and you accidentally did not I see I agree. It. Yes, sir. Totally. Numero dos. The struggle for justice is an ongoing and necessary pursuit that should prevail over laws and institutions. It kind of sounds like our MJ podcast, doesn't it? It does. That's ironic. It does. I didn't think of that until now. That's just, well, the thing, the justice should 
Yes. Just the struggle for justice right. is an ongoing and necessary pursuit that should prevail over laws Even and current laws. institutions. Yeah. So sis- the systems that are in place, Whoa. justice. Whoa, I love that. Um, can we say hashtag MSM? That's it for mainstream media. Whoa. Trust me, I've learned a lot of things on the Twitterverse this, uh, year, this hello. week. Hello to the world. I've heard of, you know, hashtag MJ fam, hashtag squared one MJ, all that shit. Um, but also hashtag MSM, which is mainstream media. That is the system to which we're trying to get justice, right? Yes, correct. I think that's a great concept. Tell me more. Number three. I don't know how to pronounce this word. Flibbity floppity. <laughs> the flip flop. What? <laughs> One's body is inviolable. Inviolable. In, yes. Invio- like, like cannot be violated. I yeah, believe. I believe that's correct. Inviolatable? I-N-V-I-O-L-A-B-L-E. In, yeah. Inviolable. Yes. That makes sense. One's body is inviolable, subject to one's own will alone. So it's up to each individual person's will. Yeah. So like, don't fucking free t- will. Don't fucking touch me. Free will. Yeah. I will choose free will. Free will. Number four. The freedoms of others should be respected, including the freedom to offend, to willfully and unjust. Blah, 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 let me start again. To willfully and unjustly encroach upon the freedoms. Of others is to forego one's own. I love that one. I mean, that sounds like it should be written by a founding father. That's deep. Read one more time, man. The freedoms of others should be respected. Okay. Including the freedom to offend. To willfully and unjustly encroach upon the freedoms of another is to forego one's own. That sounds like something Jesus would say, That's dude. That's beautiful, man. You're basically telling me that if you don't treat me like you, you're giving up your own rights to be treated as you want to be. Yeah. Yeah. That's totally golden rule. Yeah. But, but in a way better way. It's just written really well. The first part of that I love, though, because including the right to offend, because that is one of the things about the freedom of speech because people are attacking speech now left and right. Yeah. And all it is, it's speech, people. It is language. Language is very subjective by everyone's personal filter and everything else. Sir, when you're having ice cream and you put those colored things and you shake them on there, what are those things called? Sprinkles? No, they're not. You know why? Why? Because I'm from Philadelphia. You know what they're called? No. Jimmy's. Whoa, Jimmy's? All right. That's crazy. When you don't go to work, what do you do? You you call. Oh, Oh, shit. Here we go. Yeah. Just I'm just saying that's language, right? You call what? You call in. You call in. Not. No, we call out. All it is is language. But that's why the right to offend is a protected right. It always should be. We're going to fucking step on our fucking toes and stick our foot in our mouths, right? We're going to do it as a way part of the part of our conversation. The reason we have literally no editing (laughs) is because the conversation is what matters. We won't get to the final answer without hashing through the little solemn course. That is all the bullshit of our biases and our other things and our enlightenments. We won't know until we muddle through them through that muddling. We say offensive things. We say things that are politically incorrect. We say the R word sometimes we don't mean to, but it's part of that part of the process of us getting to an answer that we can all agree on. Amen. So I'm fucking dude. Give me a robe and some fucking thorns and shit. I'll wear that shit. I'll walk around. (laughs) I I don't know how to fucking put up stairs though. And build a, build an armoire, a chest of drawers. Yeah. I don't know how to do that either. Damn it. So I, I don't have nightstand. Like, I don't know how to use a hammer and nails and son of a bitch. But I'll but I'll walk. Number five. I'll have my last supper every day. Mm, dinner time. Okay, number five. Sorry. Beliefs. We're on five already. Yes, Shit. beliefs should conform to one's best scientific understanding of the world. One should take care never to distort scientific facts 
to fit one's beliefs. I love that. So reason, science. Wow, that sounds like logic. Yeah. Huh. It sounds like unemotional. It sounds like something that you are posed with uh, a question and information, and then you build up some equation, come up with an answer without any uh, bombs strapped to your chest walking into a cafe. Like, be logical, stupid. Yeah, it literally sounds like you don't want to do that. <laughs> it sounds like you don't believe the 72 virgins, or you don't believe that... You know, that you should that you should shoot the abortion doctor because he's killing babies, oh right? God. Like, what the fuck, people? I didn't think about the abortion doctor thing. I That's just great. popped in my head, man. I'm sorry. That's fine. We'll start drinking after this. Number six. People are fallible. If one makes a mistake, one should do one's best to rectify it and resolve any harm that might have been caused. What do, what do you say to that? It's like, it is the perfect phrase. Like, no we, shit, we're fallible. Did we not just say, like, did you not we just say that? Fuck up on our way to get to the answer. Yes, we're going to fucking make mistakes. However, how many times have we fessed up? Just in the you MJ thing did. alone. Yeah. Just that alone. A 180 in just my, my true feelings of the matter from logic that was laid out in front of me. Yeah. And what did I do? I fessed up. And what happened? One single person, I don't know why, like it was, I, I didn't turn enough. I didn't agree enough with the, with my change of heart. Like it's weird, right? Like that makes total sense. You know what? Take personal accountability. Oh my God. Personal accountability sucks. Get the fuck it's the worst thing. Well, who is this fucking, I, we're going to find out who this fucking group is, but they're speaking way too intelligently and logically for me to fucking follow right now. Number seven. Every tenant is a guiding principle designed to inspire nobility in action and thought. The spirit of compassion, wisdom, and justice should always prevail over the written or spoken word. It's beautiful. So you've got seven tenets of some group. Yes. Are they a religious organization or are they? Kind of. Yes. Well, they, okay. So this religious organization uh -huh. is trying to promote equality across the world among all religious organizations. And for all creatures within reason. I mean, it's yes. like even beyond hum, human rights. Yes. They're trying to be, it sounds to me, as pacifist as possible within reason, within their ability Absolutely. to do so. They promote nonviolence. It's <sighs> interesting. So in, uh, 2016 the Arkansas state capitol wanted to put up a granite monument of the Ten Commandments this group wanted to put up a monument of their own because that that seemed fair was it well obviously we've talked about this but wasn't it it was somebody it was something re representing their religion. Correct. Or what they said the religion was. Correct. Remember, correct. So, and I thought, well, why not just call everybody? In my head, I thought, call call the Jews, call the Muslims, call the Buddhists, call, let's put up six statues. So Arkansas wanted to put the Ten Commandments outside of the courthouse? The state capitol. State capitol. Yes. And this other organization. Yes. Of whom you wrote, you read the seven tenets. Correct. Wanted to put a statue representing their faith. Yes. Re their religion. Their religion. Specific because faith is not, it's not protected. Religion is protected. Correct. Okay. And you wanted to call. And I thought, why doesn't this organization call a Jewish synagogue? Why don't they call a, a, a Muslim temple? And to add their pieces why, to yeah, it as well? Yeah, let's just line them up. Yeah, line them because up. Because technically, the United States is a f free r religious country. Let's do it because, again, separation of church and state dictates Arkansas is not allowed to put the Ten Commandments on state property grounds. And that is a direct violation because Congress, well, this is Congress, though. State's different, but, possibly. I understand, but please, it's whether ahead, it's constitutional because it Correct. does set a precedent for the state as a whole. 
But it, let's just say, right? The, so the, let's say. Remember, states' rights had the Confederate flag was in Georgia for all that time, right? Until it was South Carolina, but that's oh, fine. South Carolina. I yeah, apologize. That's I fine. thought Georgia had it too. Well, they had it for a while and left, got rid of it before. I don't care. Sure, but if if I was, ta- if I was this, just shitting on your if company, a lawsuit bro. went to the United States Supreme Court because Arkansas put the Ten Commandments on state grounds, I would be fairly certain that they would be forced to remove it. Because it is a violation of separation of church and state. It's a violation of the First Amendment, for Christ's sake. Yeah, that's interesting. Because Not that I'm a Supreme Court justice. Well, what's interesting here, though, anything not... The powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states, respectively, or to the people. So do you think the Tenth Commandment and the First Commandment aren't... They conflict each other? The amendments? Yes. I don't because it, well, this is where it gets tricky because I honestly, I haven't even thought about going down this brain path yet. I, it just, this all just popped to me. So I apologize. This is like no, impromptu. It's fine, bro. But a state, it's, is the constitution about separation, church, and state? I actually, I'm sorry. I'm wrong. I'm 100% wrong. I'm taking accountability. I'm taking tenant number six from these guys because the power's not delegated by the Constitution. This one is actually delegated. It's a it's an amendment to the Constitution, speaking of religious Freedom. freedoms. So that one is, that one supersedes the states because it's saying anything not given to by the Constitution is the state's rights. This is not one of them because it is in the Constitution. So I, I've already shat on my own so could you, argument. So what's your final answer, Chuck Mark? My answer is this. Is Arkansas allowed to put that on grounds or not? Not per not per the Constitution. Not for the First Amendment. No, because the whole point is make no law respecting an establishment religion. By putting the Ten Commandments, you are now acknowledging the Ten Commandments come from the Bible only. Yeah. So it is only a specific religion that believes in the Bible. That's who you are respecting, and it shall not do that. So it should not at all. And not if it does, it should respect all. I don't agree with that either. It shouldn't even have it. Period. Not all of them. None of them. What are your thoughts? I agree completely. Or do you think everyone? If if no, one, I, all? I believe that if, first of all, the Ten Commandments, sh- no religious item or reference should be on any government property land of any kind are there tenants of the quran i'm sure right there's oh, got to be a yeah. list or yeah. a something yeah that, so right it, it, th- that's the point of government is to not interfere with religion and religion not interfere with government because that's what religious freedom is and that's that's the whole point point. and our laws were not written on the ten commandments they weren't i'm pretty sure not all so um shit fucking the ten commandments were written on one fucking law well, two, Golden golden Rule and Hammurabi, right? Eye for an eye. I mean, basically. Yes. I mean, it's basically Golden Rule is what it was more than anything. Uh, Do unto others as you'd like to have done to you. You don't want people stealing your shit and killing you and doing So don't do that. It's not really up Yeah, it's me. pretty basic. We should break down the Ten Commandments because I, I have so much to say about it. <laughs> Too much. Anyway. Not now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. No, I don't want sir, to go through this now. Not now. It's two hours and three minutes in. Okay. Bro. So the, the point is that you asked my opinion. My opinion is that there should be no religious affiliation with any government building at any level of any kind. Regardless. By doing so, you're respecting an establishment of religion. Correct. So if, yes. if a Muslim group puts a Muslim phrase or statue or marble, whatever, on, a, on this the Denver city capital, then a Jewish artifact should be able to put up there. And a Christian thing. I don't agree with that either. Well, I agree that none. I, I agree. However, let's just say the city council votes. Okay. We're going to allow this Jewish thing. Yes. Okay. Then everybody gets their thing. Correct. All the, everybody. It is an all or nothing. Here. Correct. Correct. So the fact that preferably nothing, the fact yes. that, Oh, we're going to put the 10 commandments up, but then another group says, Oh, well, you, Okay. Well, then mine needs to go too. Then there's mass protests because you want to put yours up too? That's not, no. Well, in a democracy where people feel like they can say, they can vote on everything, which they technically can't or because we're a republic, 
the majority of people would counter that religion, don't believe in that religion. So they would, that would be their vote to not allow it. But that is a... But is a direct violation. They should not be allowed to vote on that, is the point. They should not even be allowed to have a I, say on I it. agree so much. Right? Yes. That's really the ultimate issue. Now, yes, sir. Now that, now that they did allow the Ten Commandments to be on that, now they're, they put themselves in a sticky wicket because they then the floodgates open and anyone who's who would like to have their religion respected and you know their established religion respected would have to put it next to that because you allowed one to do it so you have to allow them all i agree and if you remove one you have to remove all so now cities and states or whatever whoever has these decisions they have two decisions to make should do they even have any right to to allow that to happen should that even be a thing our opinion is no but if done now do we have to let everyone else you know or yes. do we remove our one thing it comes down to that but yeah if i were if i were a christian and i put up the 10 commandments because i'm christian and then you want to put up x that's not my thing i'd be like well i don't like that up there well, yours is up there. Yeah, but, you know, it's me because it's mine and there's more of us here. You know what I mean? That's yeah. how they're, they're going to do it. Yes. And it's wrong because they're not, they're not, they don't even understand the fucking Bill of Rights. They don't understand the Constitution. Uh, apparently, just by putting the Ten Commandments up, we don't fucking understand the Constitution. <laughs> in the first, like in the first place, like <sighs> the people running for office don't even understand the fucking thing that on which the platform on which they're running, which this is the definition of the country at the time. Don't get me wrong. You can change it. There are things called amendments. And yes, to your point, slavery was amended out of, of anything. It was an amendment added, right? But they also abolished alcohol. They allowed women to vote in 19 fucking 20. Right. But I I agree with that, but don't, but they waited that long is my point that that had to be fucking written in, not fucking assumed from day one makes no sense to you and I. Right. But that's the point is like, people are like, yeah, but you don't believe in change the country. No, I do through the amendment process. There's a clear, there is a clear path to making a change to the rules that we have put upon ourselves in this country. Yes. And in order to get that change done, you have to jump through the fucking hoops. It happens to be ratification by X amount of people and this and that and the other, but you can do it. It's it's that is your path and that is your that is clearly stated. There's no you can't there's no changing of the rules. They don't move the goalposts once you start making a movement, right? Like if you have an idea that's better and you can get three quarters of the states to agree, you make change. It's clear. It's clearly written. So to say that we're like, it's yes, we may be fixed currently, and I'm talking obviously in a broader sense. Here. I we're understand. Not just talking about religion, but yeah. In a broader sense, we do have the ability to make change. We're not stuck. No one who says that they're constitutionalists or whatever are stuck on the Constitution because they know that change can happen within the Constitution. It allows for it. And here's your soapbox. <laughs> Uh, in addition to Arkansas, a very similar event happened in Missouri where they wanted to put a Christian monument on state grounds and the same basic thing transpired. Um, there was the same type of event in the city of Phoenix, Arizona, where um, in 2016, this there's a prayer before every city council meeting. So this organization petitioned to give the prayer. And... When the city council and the citizens of Phoenix found out the organization that it was, there was a massive, massive uproar Push and back. people were up in arms. Now, that's the question. Who was leading the prayer in the beginning? Do you remember? Was it like a priest or uh, any, 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 any church organization was, they had to, there was a, Process. Oh, there's an, like an the, there okay. A so you process. could ask to lead the prayer yeah, hi, for I'm that from, dinner. I'm from the Jewish or, or synagogue. The, I'm from the da da da. May I lead the prayer? Oh yeah. Here's the pro, here's the application. Go online. This and that, and you come in and you do your thing. 
But because this religion had a word in it, a specific Be- because word, right? because of who they are, who they allegedly represent, correct? Um, there was a massive, massive uproar by, in in essence, the Christian faith, the Christian. I'm sorry, the Christian religion, and the number of people that showed up. And there was one elderly gentleman that actually held up a dollar bill, and he said. Our country says, "In God we trust." On and I'm I since 1950. And I went, so. dude. But it says God. It doesn't say which God. It doesn't say right. Dude, it doesn't. Say, it just. But that's in that gentleman's mind. That was his interpretation. That it's his God. It right. do, that could be any God. Pick a God, dude. There's like a lot of them. It yeah. doesn't. Ra, Horus. Pick one. Right. Well, that's what's funny is God is both a description of Zeus, Horus, yeah, whatever Sumerian and, God, pick one, and the proper name of the capital G. Yeah, that's a problem on its own. That's why I call it. Ta da! <laughs> the place. From which everything came. But that goes back to your point about the Judeo Christian. Right. That in most people's minds, Correct. when you say God, that's what they think. Right. Because we were founded on Judeo Christian values. Correct. When everyone believed in God of some but sort, their God. I believe Judeo Christian values are good. I mean, yes. I, I, Community. We, yes. Hell, I, all of the values are. Absolutely, upon what we are based. Yes. And they're amazing. Turn the other cheek. Yes. Like, yeah. Be kind to one Absolutely. another. Uh, lend someone your, you know, why look Don't for the splinter dick. in his eye when you have a log in your own? Well, you know, lend your plow, blah, blah, all the fuck. That's communism, every... dude. Lend your plow. L- lending, bro. Lending. <laughs> uh, not give, not taking from me and giving to you. Lending. Oh, lend. okay. It's like lendingtree.com, bro. They are not sponsors here. Dear probably. Lending Tree, Dear Lending please Tree, sponsor please, us. Please give us 13 cents to our PayPal account. <laughs> As we have said you three times. We've said you thrice in one minute. Whoa. LendingTree.com. That was the third time. That was the third time. So, um, the, the, the Phoenix, Arizona City Council thing really... Well, we live in Phoenix, so it's directly impactful to us as our pursuit of happiness, I was really surprised at the amount of anger that was raised by the citizens that came to council meetings to to state why they believe that this organization should not be allowed to say a prayer and this organization has done nothing to them that they they've harmed no one they've they mean no ill will to anyone they've done nothing wrong they do community service events their tenants are nothing but peace and harmony but these people were pissed, and which is the opposite of my mother would say. That's, that's not very Christ-like, Christopher. Yeah, <laughs> uh, there's a thing called Christ consciousness. <laughs> so uh, to get to the point, this organization is the Satanic Temple. What? I'm out. You're by Felicia. Fuck that. So they have because they have no. They worship Satan. Fuck that, man. And what's I'm out. Funny Bro, is I'm they out. actually don't worship Satan. What? They don't worship Satan. They don't. They don't. They just call themselves the Satanic Temple. Okay. And but they do like a certain figure that they put up. Didn't they, they do. Their their symbol is Baphomet, which uh, we have in our. He's our honorary guy. He's on the 1983 Slayer album, Haunting the Chapel. So I have a little Haunting statue. Haunting the Chapel. I don't know how does that how it goes. It's perfect, dude. Not at all. We need checkmark to do it. So I haunting the chapel. Haunting the chapel. I am for to haunting your chapel. Hello? If you, if you, oh, Beelzebub? Yes, come, come, look at my Beelzebubs. So, ill regardless, um, it's the satanic temple, and you they have chapters in almost every city around the world, and uh, you can look up the seven tenets, which are, they're very peaceful and harmonious, and they may, they'd mean no ill will to anyone, but people were pissed just because of the name, and it, it, it just goes to show, like, I'm not, I don't, go to their meetings. I don't have anything to do with them, but I, I listened to what they said on the documentary with an open mind. And I read uh, the their... documentary, by the way, is called hail Satan. Yes, correct. And it's on Hulu. Hulu hail Satan. Hail comma Satan exclamation point. There you go. 
And I, it's, I, in fact, it's when they first came out and said, yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't actually worship Satan. We just, we call ourselves the satanic temple and the people, I actually found the documentary somewhat comical and I actually laughed because I found it light. It was done in non a, not such a not, serious way, but it, but it was a serious point. Yeah. They were made a very good point and approached it from not the most heavy way, which no. I really liked. That's what it's, I liked about that. But it showed to me that this organization could be called the Sonic Temple. It didn't have to be, but it showed how religious persecution, like it was the Quakers, it was the Puritans, it was, it could be Jews, it could be Muslims, it could be anyone. And these people were screamed at and they had death threats. And their, their capital G O D had a capital S in front of it. It's that's so why. See, that's the thing. God should not be the proper name of God. On the dollar bill? We are we are conflating the higher power belief with the turn the pronoun God. I understand. But everyone having their God, it shouldn't be the name of someone then. Right? I agree. Okay. I'm just asking. I don't know. I just think that it's so I don't even know the right adjective that this country is amazing. And Amen. We all worship different things and that's great. And I love that. I love the diversity. Div- I, you stole my word. I hate you so much. So I love the fact that how diverse that this country is and the colors of the people and the food and the, the opinions. And I love that. I love it's like we are rich with differences and ideas. That, yes. Creativity. And I, I love that. It's giving me chills talking about, it. I that's love awesome. that about this country is that we are so different in every single way and it seems like we're having a hard time embracing those differences. So don't be a dick and let the guy, by the way, they never did say the prayer. So, and that's cool, whatever. But it's, if they want to worship Darth Vader, then fucking who cares, man? If he's not, if, the, if, if someone is not infringing upon your rights, who cares? What difference does it make? That's the whole point of all this crap. Yeah. That's all I got. I love it. Well, we're not done quite yet. Uh-oh, here we go. Uh-oh. Because there behind is something... Behind curtain number three. Well, there is something in the documentary that I really admired. Yes. And we're going to we're gonna take it and we're going to compare it to ele- the, the organization that Jesus created, the Catholic Church. There's a speech of this woman in the Michigan chapter of the, of the satanic thing where she talks about the killing the president. Out? Okay. In her speech, she says something about killing the president, Yeah, which is a direct violation. It is, okay. it is the one free speech thing that you cannot do, right? Yell fire, uh, incite violence and threaten the, I think threatening presence like a treasonous act. I it, think, it is. I think. Yeah. What happened? What happened to them when they, when that happened, when that was exposed right away, what happened? Well, hang, hang fucking, so it was the leader of the Detroit chapter, the female, the female leader, of the tr- yep. Detroit chapter of the satanic temple. And so like death to the president or something, something about along those lines. Those okay, lines. I, right. It wasn't, I don't think she, it was the president at the time. I don't think she, she was, was the like name. the leader of that chapter. She was a leader of that chapter. She was one of the originals that broke, like that started their own chapter. Cause she started yes. getting, she was like an actor that got like, and they got very like artistic with it and got very whatever, but they, she just got a little carried away. Yeah. One speech says that gone. Yeah, they, they fucking yank it and they get her the fuck out. Why? What's number six about fucking whatever being right? Uh, is it yeah. is it number six? I think. Words, uh, words. I forget. One of the tenets is about a self accountability or, or or holding yourself accountable or something. I think uh, it's, people are fallible. Is number six. Okay. If one makes a mistake, one should do one's well, best, best to rectify. Okay. Well, they rectified this mistake because it is a treasonous act. It's it's beyond just well like, treasonous in the eyes of the United States. For right. Sure. Well, that's the thing is they're living in the United States. That calling a death to the president is is illegal. That is a treasonous. Oh yeah, act. yeah. So her saying that they had to act within reason yes. and they had to get rid of her because and they had to hold well, they, her accountable. They, for they that. didn't get rid of her. They 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 pulled the chapter. They, they ended the, the chapter. Yes, they ended the chapter. They ended its whatever. just because they understood. 
the, the eyes that are on them already, and they have to do the right thing. What the fuck did the Catholic Church do when boys were being diddled? They just threw money at it and hit it. There's your difference. You got somebody that allegedly follows Satan being more Christ-like <laughs> than the fucking organization that Christ himself fucking started. Do you remember the, the part in the documentary when they, they were trying to do a satanic mass in Boston? No, I do yeah, not Yeah, and they, were, they, they couldn't... They were going to do it like at a local college or somewhere, and they there was there was there was protest by two thousand Catholics. Like they had their ultra boy outfits on and all, they had crosses and shit, and they shut them down. So they went a local ja uh, Chinese restaurant, let them have the mass in their loft above the restaurant. So the guy, <laughs> the, the one of the guys that was part of the organization, said, "Yeah, I really I felt really really." bad that night because of the protests and you know i just i just i felt emotionally not good and because you know things didn't go the way we wanted it to and then you know i didn't sleep good then i woke up the next morning and thought wait a minute all those protesters were in boston where they abused all those kids and then i was like yeah i feel better now fuck them yeah fuck them <laughs> it was so funny right but that how he said it is that the fucking point we're talking about here yeah you're, yeah got, regardless of the name of the entity the pronoun name Balthazar Baphomet. Baphomet. That's something like Basomatic five thousand. It does sound like that. Um but regardless of that, they have an incident that is wrong and they address <laughs> the incident that is wrong. The largest I would single or single religion, right? The largest single sect of a religion would be Catholicism. Has to be, right? I believe it's still bigger than even Islam and whatnot. I have no idea. But they have their own city, their own fucking code, whatever. Their, their own country, right? The, basically, Vatican City? Yes, it is, yeah. They make a mistake. Mistake. 8,462 times and bury it 8,461 times. Or one more. One less or one more, whatever. And then you sit back and go, those are the people you're protesting. The, the hearts of those people are more pure than the words of the religion fighting them. That's I didn't I I didn't think about that at all. You're welcome. That was not on my agenda. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. No, you don't no. you should it, not apologize, sir. Does that I mean does that hold That's any a, water in a way? Yeah, a, a big fucking 55 gallon bucket. So the hearts of the Satan worshipers are bigger than the words of the Catholics. That's sadly, it's true. Or stronger, whatever. It it's is. Like, I mean, that's fucked up. <sighs> well, tell us what you think. I mean, do you think that we, we do we remove in God we trust off the off the currency? Do we remove under God? My personal opinion, it's my opinion. Yes, I have reasons for it, and I think it's just because we should have nothing to do with any said religion. Religion gets us in trouble. Still have not found an elected official that doesn't talk about God. And by the way, Lindsay fucking Robinson. Shit. <laughs> this is my time. I'm just going to do it because it's October. So it's about a month before the election. Running in legislative district 12 state Senate in Arizona. I have offered for you to come on our show and. Share your your platform with us. What I did not expect was you to text my best friend, Mr. Woodsy, at fucking midnight, asking for his fucking vote. And when he asked you to not fucking text him at midnight, you asked him not to curse and blame the fucking courier. You blamed AT&T or whoever the fuck you have, your cell carrier, for delivering the message at the wrong time. Do you know what the fucking carrier would not have done? They would not have delivered any message had you not put it into the system. So maybe you should have vetted your carrier better and not pass the fucking buck. And the next time you pass the buck, if you pass a buck on something this simple, what are you going to do when you get, try to get in a position of power? I'm just saying, this is a politician bullshit. And I just lost my shit, man. I'm sorry. Is she going to get, you know, she's going to get elected, right? Yeah. No, actually, she might not, because it's been conservative. Well, it's been conservative for a long time. You looked it up? She has a shot. Yes, it's been run by a Republican for this whole time. Okay. She's trying to out. Is that su that's a super Mormon district, right? Possibly. And it doesn't matter to me, because if the fucking Republican guy texted me at midnight, and I fucking oh, yeah. called him out on it, yeah. and he fucking passed the buck, guess what? Right? Same shit. Hold on. 
I've got oh, here's here, here go. comes one here. This is what we're going to do, because I'm sorry. Man. Do you want to say just, this for another time, sir? I'm just going to close it on this. If you're OK with that. I, yeah, whatever. I get a fucking text from this motherfucker. Oh, here we go. Hey, Mark. No, that's not the one. <laughs> hello, oh, there it is. Hello, Chuck Mark. Hi, I'm NRA dash PVF volunteer Cody texting you to see if Prez Trump and Sen McSally can count on your vote this November. This nov reply. Yes. Undecided or stop to opt out. Uh, we're talking about freedoms, right? This is America. Freedom. What do I, did he just, did, did Cody just fucking tell me to reply? Yes. Undecided or stop. He did. Don't tell me what to fucking do. Cody. <laughs> You're not the boss of me. You're not the boss of me. This is America. And I replied, is fuck off an acceptable reply? So did he respond? Go. No, no one, no one responded to that. But <laughs> my point, my point is this, man. We we are uncovering systems. We, you and I are talking like we're we're basically Satanists now, and that's a fucking shit. I'm fucked because now someone's going to take that like a quote, like I said that we're Satanists. No, they're, no, they're yeah, they not. are. When we get big and we get huge, shut up. When we get huge in Japan. They're gonna be like, dude, no. Uh, hey, Mark uh, said Venezuela, we're bro. huge Satanists. Venezuela. We're we're plummeting in Venezuela. Oh no. Uh, I know. Sixty six? We're seventy one now. Oh shit, I'm so sad. By the way, just to let to let you know, somehow six downloads got us on the top whatever in Apple Podcasts. <laughs> I looked at our total to Venezuela downloads. Six. Wow, they're cranking uh, so it, huh? I they must not have a big podcast influence. Maybe we can we can crack in there. Like with nine. Up. Can we get seven, seven, seven? Uh, so anyway, I'm I I went on a rant, but these are things that are, we're very passionate about. Is, we want justice. Is uh, the right thing unsolicited political text messaging legal? I don't know what the laws are anymore, but there's petitions. I thought I signed something years ago that said I shouldn't get any unsolicited anything. Yet I've got people texting me about a rental property, about selling my rental property to them, or this or that or the other. So I I honestly don't know. And that was such a great way to end religion. Freedom of religion, y'all. Freedom of texting Sir, act. Can I? Can you read this one more time, or do I need no, to read it? No, read it. Amendment number one. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Don't put one in the front, and don't not acknowledge any of them. I don't know. Sound like that was a go, shitty way to say sound that. Sound like you're going to get a little porny there for a second. The O in out in out. <laughs> All right, sir. Let's close it out. You sh you shut it down, my friend. Well done, dude. That's it. Yep. That was way too easy. That's all of our guys. People. Thank you so much for listening. If you have, if you haven't shut off already, um, please subscribe. Please follow us. Please leave comments. Leave comments. We have a thousand downloads of a particular podcast and have a total of twenty five ratings on Apple. Please help us out. Please. We love you. All the five stars. Um, which one was this? This is a con conscious, right? Knocked yeah. Conscious. www.knockedconscious.com. We're on Apple, Spotify. And if we say, Alexa, play Knocked Conscious podcast, it might turn it on. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.